After a year of planning, the day had finally arrived. We were en route to the start of our month-long canoe journey across Labrador. After staring at maps all winter, we decided on a route where we would start at the Menahik Hydro Dam and paddle our canoes approximately 670 kilometers over two heights of land and three ecosystems to the coastal village of Nain. If all goes well, we should be done in 35 days. Like any proper canoe trip, getting there was an adventure on its own. Dave Green, Chris Jard and I would be driving from Halifax, Nova Scotia to Labrador City where we would meet with Alex who plane hopped his way from Toronto, Ontario the day before. From here we would take the Tuatin rail line and head north for another four hours where we would then be dropped off at the Menahek Hydro Dam. I think down here looked like an easier entry. Yeah, this guy. This, yeah, this was it. All right, we are north of Bay Como on the 389 en route to Lab City. It's about eight o'clock at night and we decided just to pull over and park on the side. We've been driving for about 15 and a half hours today, so I think that's good enough. And uh, yeah, we got a little, uh, little sight here. A little camping trip before the camping trip. There's a fire pit here. We picked up uh, some beer and some wieners. We have an old fashioned cookout. The black flies are already out, they're buzzing around. We're getting the royal welcome. We got bugs, we got some rain, we got a lake. I think it's been a pretty good day. We've gotten like, I don't know, 1,000 kilometers, 15 hours of driving. We'll get to Lab City tomorrow morning. It's fine. We're gonna sit here, drink beer, have a good old time. Something from a sci fi movie. Yeah, it's one of the biggest earthen dams in the world. Jesus. 250k to go. We have made it to Labrador. It's been a long couple days, but we're here. I don't think we broke the windshield. No. So far so good, we haven't broken anything. Yeah, still have all our tires in there. Yeah. Good start to the trip. Alright guys, so I'm standing on the lawn of Toby's place right now in Labrador City and I've got communication that the boys are coming any second and I think this might be them. Howdy! Yo boys! Yeah. What is it. going on? Not much man. How's the drive? It's long. Yeah, I bet. Yeah. Yeah, two days of driving. We just saw two wolves, a black bear. Oh nice. Yeah. Oh, that's sweet. Camped on the side of the road, got all our tents nice and sandy and wet to start the trip. Perfect. Yeah. So we'll be cozy. Yeah. Unreal. Yes, Should well, I park in the driveway or? Uh, I would say yes, but she's gone right now. I don't know where she went, so I would say no now. I just I'll pull I'll up there. On. The boys are here. We're one step closer to starting this trip. First time we're actually looking at all the gear together. This is all our food, four solid bear barrels. Two barrels, two bags. 
There is a lot of gear. <laughs> no shortage of it. I just here start spreading these out. Yeah, I, mean, I got a half dozen spread room. Shit. That gun is really long, isn't it? Man, the low. Pelican case was ridiculous. There's like two of those. Really? Yeah. So we are currently just hanging out, waiting for the train to arrive. We've tested all of our gear inside the canoes to make sure it fits, and it's looking pretty good. And luckily enough, there was actually a couple of workers at the Emerald Station here that uh, were able to let us know what time the train's coming. So they gave them a call and apparently we can expect it at three, which we're almost at right now. We've just been hanging out here in the sun. stuff is loaded. Jumping on the train up to Menahik Dam. Should be another three or four hours before we get there. The Tuatin Railway is the first Aboriginal run rail transportation that stretches 220 kilometers through the wilderness of Western Labrador and Northeastern Quebec. Other than the track being a means of transporting freight and minerals, the route also plays an essential part in commuting passengers from the surrounding Innu communities. our time to mark up our maps with important milestones which helped us create a general timeline for the next month. We even had the opportunity to chat with some locals. As what seems like common practice in the north, we got into a friendly conversation with some of the workers at the dam who offered to drive us the kilometer down to the put-in. down the slope, but I didn't want her to no, no, slip good enough. We can carry him yeah. this far. You guys saved us a hell of a lot of work. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
take a catch a breather and see what's up. So there are a ton of fish just boiling right in this area and they are not small. All right, so we've officially made it to the put-in. And we're in Menahik at the Hydro Dam. Some great guys here that we met that sent, helped us bring all of our gear down from the train down to here. And because we've seen some fish action happening on the water here and we don't really feel like paddling today, we decided that this is gonna be our home for the night. There's just so many emotions going through my mind right now. I just cannot believe we're finally here. Feeling pretty good. Feel good. I'm glad to be here. It's, uh, it's been a long road. Uh, small miracle that we managed to get everybody and all the things to the actual start of the trip. And it's not raining. Bugs are bad, but that's to be expected. But it's a beautiful night to start the trip. So we wanted to get up a little earlier this morning because we know that there could be some bad weather coming in on Wednesday and because we have to do some big uh, lake paddling, we wanted to get on the water a little earlier for day two to actually get some distance crushed. Yeah, we figured we started the trip off on the right foot, crushing some distance. What lake are we on right now? We are on Dyke Lake. We're on Dyke Lake. Dyke Lake. Making some big water crossings right now. Looks like we might have a little bit of a tailwind going through this little corridor. Uh, we got a storm brewing to our left, but it uh, looks like it's going to miss us. I'm feeling like I've been in the boat for about eight hours though. Are you? Oh yeah. That's weird. Feel about that way. <laughs> yep, my ass is feeling that way. Yeah, my ass and my, my hands. These new uh, hot spots coming in. Oh, blisters? Not yet. But Not just some. Yeah. Just some spots letting you know that they're they're feeling things. Oh yeah, they're gonna be blisters. I'm gonna be very sore tomorrow. So we've been crushing it so far today. I think we're. What do we say at this point? 33 or 34k. 34k. 34k on the day, and it's only 1.30 in the afternoon. So we're doing very well. We're ahead of schedule, setting us up well just in case we do get a windstorm tomorrow. Holy shit, you weren't kidding, eh? <laughs> no. Nope. Time to pass around some granola. Get in there for a sample. Four. So it's getting a little later in the day and we're doing the biggest crossing, which is about an eight kilometer crossing as the crow flies. Luckily we have a tailwind, but there's a lot of islands over here. So we busted the GPS and we had some um, waypoints that I put in before the trip and we're just gonna follow that across. No need to mess around, you know? Well, sounds good. It looks like the rain's holding off too. Storm come in. Imminent destruction. Be a banger. Stuck in the whole sky, wasn't it? All right, so we got hit by some rain. We got to shore just in time and got this fire going, and we're just taking a little bit of a break before we head out, head on. 
are over 50 kilometers today. It was a really big day. So stoked to be on site, get some dinner in us, warm up by the fire, and uh, yeah, another great night out here. A lot of drums just hanging around this site. This campsite is most likely used quite a bit in the winter when it's a little bit easier to access. But we're doubtful that many people have been here in the summertime. We made up for whatever wind shit show tomorrow is going to be, at least. Amen to that. Yeah, we're into like day four right now. Yeah. You know, well, the day three milestone is on the other side of the Guys River. So, six exactly. kilometers from here. But we've gone more than 50, 18 times three is 54. Sense. Just saying. Just saying. The math just doesn't add just up. Just saying. I'm just saying. Our lentil dinner. What'd you, what was it, Noah? Coconut curry lentil? Mm hmm. Doesn't get much better than this, boys and girls. Rain, bugs, but there's a nice fire. So being the astute observers of nature as we are, we realize that these bugs, they go on shifts. In the morning, you have the, the mosquitoes, and at around 10 o'clock, they, they clock out and the, the black flies come out. And then for about half an hour, the horse flies come out and then they tag the black flies back in and then back at seven o'clock at night, the mosquitoes start again. But their uh, objective is to always have a full cloud around you, which is what they've been doing. Consistent. Consistent. Today. Yeah, I don't know why. I just don't think that one's gonna fit in if this is sideways. Maybe switch it up. Maybe. We'll get it down. We're just getting all the gear packed up here and then we're gonna be heading out shortly, starting our paddle. The battle against the winds. Today we reached the Iron Arm, which is a 30 kilometer straight narrow section off of Tickamaugan Lake. With little shelter on either shore, this section puts us in a very vulnerable situation, and with wind expected to reach 50 kilometers an hour, a shift in wind direction may cause dangerous headwinds and inevitable delays. So you're thinking if we time this, we might be timed right, right now. Uh, might be helpful. So if we, uh, our timing's looking fairly good so far this morning. Um, we know the wind's coming out of the southwest right now, and we know it's gonna switch uh, 90 degrees and come out of the northwest. And if we can get down around this corner here uh, sooner than later, we should have a tailwind or a helpful helping wind to carry us up the arm until it changes. That, It'd be great. That would be a treat, for that sure. That would be amazing. It's exactly what we want. Our, our boys here are currently making the final crossing that we just made. Big water out there and strong winds. What's that Mary J. Bly song that you could work it, put your back into it? You could do it, put your back into it? <laughs> Yo, Mary J. Bly says you could do it, put your back into it. That was tough, eh? Yeah. yeah, waves got pretty big out there. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're hefty. Might as well have a, a rest for a second here, boys. Oh, yeah. Stretch the calves a little. Yeah, I forgot to do my morning stretch this morning. <laughs> I thought about that as soon as I got in the boat. I was like, ooh. Finding these rapids, I don't think it was going to be too easy. We 
we're just we were just trying to get to the iron arm and we ended up having a a brutal portage we, we thought we were gonna have to punch through a forest in order to get to the river and we ended up like last minute just found a ATV trail or a snowmobile trail that was obviously used in the winter and uh, it honestly saved us having to punch through the thickest forest to get back to the river so what could have taken us most of the day today it only ended up taking us like maybe two three hours and we found this cool wolf skull on this portage. What else do we see on this portage? Oh, and <laughs> Dave also had a run in with a bear. It was, we, as we brought all of our stuff to one end and on our way back, uh, we were just about to go grab the canoes and there was a bear just coming to check out our uh, canoe scenario. There's a chance that he was gonna portage them for us, but we were doubtful of that. So Dave shoot him off and he took off pretty quickly into the bush. And uh, yeah, now we're gonna head on. I'm gonna leave this though for the gods, river gods. What do you got for us here? A little meat and cheese. Nice. Stack them up. Stack them up, boy. Get your blocks. Yeah, it's full glory, too. Iron So today's a, today's a windy day, there's no doubt about it. We're on the Iron Arm here in Labrador and the wind's picked up a ton today. We could see the swells slowly getting bigger and bigger and the waves getting bigger. And towards the end, we were going over huge rollers of just, the canoe goes up and down and just crashes on the other side. We were trying to ride them on 45 degrees, trying to keep water out of the boat. but. Basically just trying to find a good place to camp for the day. We know that there's a good chance of high winds this week, so like at any day we might be stuck here for any given time. So we wanted to find a place that we could hunker down in and be good for, you know, a couple days if we had to, and this is the spot that we found, so. Donut. Donut, yeah. Right, because the middle will be the hardest to get. Right. We got time. Christopher, we got time. What are you making there? Making some uh, bannock for lunch tomorrow. And a nifty little mix. And I learned from last year's, so I reinforced everything on the corners and whatnot. What happened last year? Just really thin. I, I ha All I had was like thin aluminum. Uh, and it just wasn't super durable. It, it survived, but could have been better. Oh, I see. Look at that little oven. Yes. Put it that far back, eh? Backwoods gauge is you can hold your hand in front of it for and count to eight, but no more. 
gets too hot to hold in front of after eight. Huh. And you just kind of watch it. And... So how long would that take approximately? Um, it's a pretty big thing. So maybe half hour. Still quicker than I was thinking. Yeah. So the, the nice, nice thing about this is it uses flame. So when you're, if you're making bannock for lunch tomorrow, when you build your fire and it's too high to cook on, you do that. And then once it dies down, you'd have coals down, and you can actually down. cook. That's a great idea. Right. Yeah. <laughs> this thing's growing on me already. Not that it was ever not grown on me. I was open to the idea the whole time. I've just never used one. Oh yeah, it's a lot of fun. Send it directly to PETA. fast once I was in the tent, I'll tell you that. Okay. With continued strong winds and white caps, today we are experiencing our first weather delays. To occupy our minds, we lounged around the smoldering fire and got a little more familiar with our gear. another windy day that we've got out here. We've just been kind of like holding off at camp and uh, hoping that this wind dies down a bit but so far it's looked like it's died down a little bit and we're anticipating it slowing down a little bit later on today but right now this is uh, still a little rough to be launching in. It looks kind of fine near the shore here and up the side but we have to make a crossing at some point today and there's pretty sizable white caps out there so just not worth it if we're not truly in a rush. We got some shoes drying here. Any bit drier you can get, you take it while you can. We're finally getting to eat the product of the bannock that Chris made last night. It's looking pretty legit, man. Thanks. And there's homemade beef jerky to go with it. There it is. Woo! What cut of meat do you use? Round roast. Round Generally. roast. Chop round, if you can get it. And do you just cut it yourself? Yep. I, uh, I like my jerky thicker, so I cut it about a centimeter in width. Uh, marinate overnight in malt vinegar and dip in spices and dehydrate that. Yeah, it looks well spiced. Most of it falls off on the way, but some stays on. Looks filling, though. Yeah, it'll, it'll fill your gut. All we need is a thousand cows. Yeah. 
Do you huh? cook it first? Nope. You don't have to cook it. What type of cheese is this? Cheddar. Nice. Vermont cheddar. Mountain cheddar? Vermont. I got that New England taste in there. Yeah, I actually tasted that. <laughs> you, could you could taste a little bit of New England in there. So we did a little hike up from our campsite, which is down at the bottom by the shore over there. There's a big hill behind it, so we thought we'd go for a hike. And it offered this beautiful view of the Iron Arm. Big island, that little narrow, that looks... Yeah, that crossing up there does not look fun. Yeah, it's almost like when you go up to these two islands, you cross there. That's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah, it's really narrow there. It's really narrow there, and there are a couple good deep camp sites up there. We're all set to go here. The spray deck's all rigged up. Cut down on how much wind we take on and how much water splashes over the top. It doesn't matter, I can, un I can untie it and just move it up if you want. So we spent most of the day waiting in camp. The, the wind hasn't really died down too much but it's about five o'clock at night and we have about 10 kilometers to travel in headwinds up the Iron Arm. And then we might have some dinner and then we might do the final crossing or we really gotta judge the wind when we get there. But the spray decks are on, ready to take off. It's been one of those long waiting days, but that's part of traveling in the north. As we paddled up the iron arm, we learned our first valuable lesson. Go when the going is good, regardless of the time. Out here, weather dictates everything. Well, there's nice grass in here. This is true. Truck up up in there. We go check out what the backside of this little point here says. Might as well, while we're waiting for the dudes. Now we're going downstream though. Woo! Just getting a little bit more enjoyment out of the iron iron. And we're officially out of it. We have rounded it. We're done. We're out of the arm. They're still in the arm. We are not in the arm. We left our friends in the arm. In the iron arm. We can make anything work. There's a bit of a cold in here, why don't we just tuck her in there? Sounds good. Oh, yes, bud. Is she looking like a spot? All right, so we just arrived at our campsite for night number three. We just did a pretty <laughs> intense paddle into the headwinds here. Um, yeah. The iron arm, she's something else. The sun was so bright, so I was just rocking it like this. Dave has just gone to inspect the site right here, and he, I think I heard him say something along the lines of, ah, yes, bye. So I think we might actually have a campsite here, so that'd be kind of neat. Peppers, green peppers, yellow peppers, corn, 
So I'm going to show you guys our typical summer setup. On the upper, we have a bug jacket, the original bug jacket. And then underneath, we have these dry pants, which have proved to be essential. So you put them on with dry socks. With dry socks underneath to keep your feet warm when you're wading, wading up rivers or on those cold days. Sometimes I don't wear pants underneath, it depends on how hot it is. You put neoprene socks over top. shoes over there. Nope, the neoprene gives you another layer of insulation and also protects any pressure points from your shoe on your dry pants to stop any leaks. And then you always have your rain jacket close by because it can rain at any moment, even on a sunny day like this. Our team had another day of big lake paddling ahead of us as we worked our way up at Tatamagan Lake towards the height of land. With weather on our side, our attention shifted to our fishing rods with the hopes of catching a few lake trout for lunch. Oh man. She's shaking her head and I don't like it. I don't know how well I have her hooked. We didn't get this one being landed on film, but you can see it was a good sized catch. Time for some lunch, eh? I'd say. It ain't gonna be bad, I'll tell you that. You're using a fork like a real man. Yeah. He's a gentleman. Must miss our animals. Yeah. First fish fire of the trip. One of many. We're just before the height of land, just getting up to Mole Lake, and uh, this seems to be some sort of cabin belonging to a French person of sorts. What else is there? Good picture here. Some crabs. It's a classic tree. Tree in the north with black shit on it. 
Once we made it to the top of Atchitamagan Lake, the headwaters petered out into flooded alders which seemed to be the work of beavers damming the stream. We tracked and dragged our canoes up the stream towards the next still water. Dave, what are we looking at in front of us here? This is a pretty big spot for us. Well, this over here is, uh, as on our name says, Teddy Bear Hill. And the hill over to the side of it's a little bit higher, 600 meters. And running it across the top of these hills here is the uh, height of land between the Atlantic watershed and the Arctic watershed, or the Ungava Bay. And that's really exciting for us because we're about a kilometer away from it right now. And that means that we will be going downhill for a little ways after that. We'll be off the lakes and we get to go see what the Tapa River is all about. So that's cool, man. Cool. Yeah, pumped. It's going to be awesome. With this portage marks the first big milestone of the expedition. We were officially portaging out of Labrador into Quebec as we crossed the Laurentian Divide into the Arctic watershed. There's so much fish in here. I don't think I've seen the pot that full before. <laughs> Yo, how are you feeling today? I'm feeling pretty good today. Today we crossed the height of land, which is pretty sweet. What does that mean for the trip? It means it's all downhill, as Dave says, until it's not when we start going back towards the next side of land. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're over all the big lakes and every day we're distancing ourselves from civilization. And so we just thought we'd celebrate tonight with some sips of rum. And we have a leftover fish from this afternoon, which makes sense because we probably had about eight pounds of lake drought. You guys saw the fish fry. It was massive. <laughs> Good attempt. Yeah, there's no way. Yep. Raindrops. And then the rain started. Before we could even finish our morning road coffees, we already reached our first set of rapids.
After a few more paddle strokes, we reached a second set, and with all the choked shorelines, we could only scout our line from our boats from above. Let's just back paddle our way down, eh? There's a rock right on the shore too. Out of my skin, there's a sailor charm. Never sleep. Draw, draw, draw. Never. Go close to shore. This set was a little more sporty than the one before. Yesterday was our first milestone. We crossed the height of land into Nunavik. Now we are doing a few lake hops to reach the Depa, which we'll be taking for about 125 kilometers. Yo, we had a pretty exciting morning this morning though. Yes, we, right off the bat we hit a few, we just sent it on, on a couple of class twos. It's pretty rocky, but other than that, it wasn't too bad. But these boats have already proved to be the right tool for the job out here. We just bounce off stuff sometimes. And it's no big deal. You can tell here, the mountainous terrain that we're in, the trees are starting to sparse out a bit as we make our way to the barren lands. Chaz, what are the kids looking at here? So we pulled up on this old, old river and it's a washout from this mountain right here. And the colors are interesting. You can tell there's a lot of iron in this old, old rock. And as it erodes, the iron becomes exposed to oxygen and it oxidizes, creating this like reddish hue on everything. And as it oxidizes, it precipitates which it becomes a solid. So in a lot of the sediment here, there's floating um, iron precipitate. And you can tell it that because it's really cloudy and kind of red in the water right here. You can tell at one time it just flowed through here. Yeah, it's the first time we're seeing this though. So the topography and terrain is changing as we continue down this route, which is pretty cool. Do you want to see some variation out there? Exactly. All right, so we made it to our campsite here on day five. And we actually are staying at a camp that has obviously been camped at before. A lot less wet than some of our other sites that we've had. Nice cleared out spot. And we're gonna go out fishing for a little while because we actually made pretty good time today. Made it to our site for three o'clock. And so we've got the rest of the afternoon to kind of hang out and enjoy. And uh, yeah, now time to go enjoy some fishing and hopefully get some more fish for tonight. Let's just stick them on. It's not, it's not overthink it. Okay. We'll just throw them on right, right there. So when the decks are on. What are we doing right now? Hey, we're uh, taking these fancy stickers that the uh, Royal Canadian Geographical Society gave to us. And we're gonna get them onto our boat here. It's uh, been on the to-do list for a little while. But uh, boats have been wet pretty much non-stop since we got here. What can you do? What can you do? It's looking pretty good. Thanks RCGS for helping us with our expedition across Labrador. Thank you. So earlier today when I was waiting up river, I, I guess I slipped and I got a little cut in my dry pants and my foot got soaked. 
So now we're just doing a quick fix because it's, it's too wet to, to add the aqua seal. So we're adding tenacious tape to each side to hopefully last the day. But I am noticing the sides aren't really sticking that well. No, they're not. I think it's that material. It's just wet, yeah. It's not, um, try, why don't we turn it inside out and try the other side? The moisture. Moisture's the enemy. Come on, Tenacious. Yeah. Oh, it's in the name. It's not being that tenacious right now. Yeah. Well, we could try the Aqua Seal and see how that that sets. You can set in a moist environment? Uh yeah, I might be able to. We'll give it a try and see. Uh... We'll give it a try. sit overnight. Good as new. Thanks man. No worries. We finally have some tailwinds. So we're just enjoying ourselves. Our friends over here have set up a, t a sail. How's the sail working out? Oh buddy, we're going good. You're cooking. We haven't seen anyone out here at all, but we have seen a couple cabins along the route. So along the shores over here, we actually just saw another one that actually looks like a pretty nice homestead. Too, eh? Or a snowmobile. Oh, true. Definitely snowmobile. The lifestyle out here is definitely more winter oriented. I know, that blows my mind, but like once you kind of get your head around it, it's like, kind of makes sense. All right, so we've had a pretty good day so far today. A lot. We've been crushing distance. We're almost at 15 kilometers for the day. I don't know exactly what time we're at, but just a lot of moving water and actually a lot of tailwinds, which is quite the treat. But uh, we've had a lot of these swifts coming up and just really cool that now we're actually paddling the Depa River. The headwaters of the Depa River has many short river sections. With the strong current in these narrows and the tailwind on the lakes, we were able to clip along at a very respectable pace. This made reaching our daily distance quota easy work. So we've been absolutely crushing lake distance today. And we're probably sitting at around 30 kilometers right now, and it's probably like, what, do you, what time do you think it is, like four? It's mid-afternoon sometime. Um, but we've been crushing distance, so we just kind of pulled over at a site after a set of rapids here, and uh, we're just doing some casts, stretching the legs, and getting ready before we crush one more lake, which is about 10 kilometers. And then that's gonna put us actually at our marker for day 10, which means that since it's day six right now, we're actually four days ahead of schedule, which would be friggin' awesome. Um, because as we get further on into this trip, there's a lot of variables that we just don't know how long things are gonna take. So having this extra time as a buffer means that when we're on like a really big portage day or something like that, we don't have to feel bad about only doing like 10 kilometers or five kilometers in the day, depending on how, how difficult it is. So this is kind of setting us up really well for further on in the trip. Today was actually gorgeous. No, bare, like little spats of rain here and there, but not too bad. Um, wind has been behind our back for the most part, which is a treat. And 
no fish unfortunately but other than that like the there's been no sun out really it's just been kind of overcast like this which is kind of nice like the sun really takes it out of you when you're paddling so got the solar panels out charging our Sherpa 100 battery unit which we've been using to charge the cannon and we actually tried to uh, charge the drone battery as well and it seems to have worked even on a cloudy day like today we got six percent juice inside the inside this little guy right here see there's actually like a AC plug on it which is pretty awesome all right we are out here on Lac La Porte Noah's got a fish uh, uh is it a bike it's a bike <laughs> Pike! God damn it. Oh, I thought you were a little brookie. Noah's got another fish on. And it's a pike. Pike! Another one, man. God damn it. <laughs> another yeah. fish. Maybe a little bigger. Hopefully a little bigger. We're done with the snot rockets. A little bit more decent of a size. <laughs> do you want to deal with them? No, I'm good. Nice. Give him a kiss. All right, so we are at the Montagnus Club Jammin' Camp on Jammin' Lake. You guys want to sleep here tonight? <laughs> you want a cabin, man. You said you wanted to sleep, you wanted a cabin. I don't know if I wanted it this bad. This is the most cabin I've ever run up here. Oh, another bottle of booze, empty. Oh my god. That's what they're using up here for something. Your I wonder if that's a salmon rig. I feel like that would be salmon bait. I just, or maybe lake trout. There's a gear plug. Sa oh, maybe that's just stuck on there then. Yeah, it is. To protect it. To keep it, yeah. And coffee. <laughs> wow. It's decaf. No, uh, useless brown water. Oh, that's been thermal. This fishing rig is really interesting though. Yeah. Look. There's whales in here, man. They're jigging with it if it's on a stick like them. Yeah. Wonder if this is for ice fishing. Oh, true. Right. That's a monster hook. What's in here? What do they know? What do they know that we don't? Probably a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they just throw it out. Somebody out there is like, I got a camp out on Jammin' Lake. Whoa, this thing's like pristine. What are they catching in this lake? Let's Holy go. smokes. Oh yeah, somebody's still using this. Yeah, this is clean. Somebody flies in here. Absolutely. Yeah, they're catching some monsters in here. It's nuts. We have to do it. Maybe troll back to the site. Deep jigs. <laughs> Deep jigs. Just swamp ass and just be uncomfortable in the bow and just a new level of like so uncomfortable. I wanted anything other than be sitting in that boat. Sweet release of death. Wood 
chose his bones with wind broken stones in the sea and the sky one and all at a time the blood sings a while I'm running naked in the sun he's got in the trees I'm weak in the knees and the sky is a painful blue I want to look around but honey all I see is you all right, so it's day seven out here, and I've been wearing the same clothes every single day since the start. Socks are starting to smell pretty bad, so uh, I'm gonna do laundry out here for the first time on the trip. Get a full reset going. I put on a fresh shirt today. Have you also been wearing that same pair of clothing to bed? Every single night. With the exception of like maybe one night, I think I hung my underwear on the line, because I did jump into the lake once with my underwear to clean them. But yeah, I've been sleeping in the clothes every single night because they're dry. And I just figured, like, why dirty another pair of clothes? Just basically keep the dirt going as long as you can. Get all the nasty juices out of these. Brand new. Ready for another day in the bush. After Jam and Lake, the depot turns into a proper river with many sets of rapids along the way. We would be traveling approximately two days before having to leave to make our overland crossing to the George River. From our campsite, we heard the roar of the first set of rapids. Once entering the narrows, we lined our boats cautiously before getting out to scout. After the portage, the river remained pretty shallow and required more lining and maneuvering. I may have to go right into that deep water channel, eh? Go like out to there. I'll have to say up the river from that rock that's in the middle. We're two here. With waves getting a little beefier, we decided to throw the spray decks on. Our first technical set required some navigation through shallow rocks, which we would then need to ferry across to river right to make our line. Yeah, now let's make our way across. I'm not really sure where to go. We're going backwards into a rock here. The fun continued for the rest of the morning and was non-stop. I think our team is all in agreement that river travel is our favorite type of canoeing. Drop. When running rapids in a remote area, we aren't looking for the biggest or wettest line. Typically, we try to get down in the tamest section of the river, which we can usually be found along the shoreline or behind big boulders. When riding wave trains, back paddling helps slow the boat down to give you more control and make you less wet. We rely heavily on these strokes when paddling unfamiliar or technical white water. We soon came to a section that required us to do a full scout mission. 
and after some discussion, we found the line that would work if we stayed to the river left. We want to make our way to the left. Oh, I see that cliff there at 12 o'clock. The risk of running rapids increases dramatically when you're in such a remote area with a full boat of supplies to get you through the next month. Tipping or pinning is definitely something we want to avoid and weighs heavily in our decision making. Yep. Hard, hard, hard. Right through. All right, so we just made our way down a pretty beefy set of rapids. Beefy when you're considering we're out here in the middle of Labrador. Uh, so we just made it down, actually like stuck our line perfectly. Noah did an awesome job navigating us down here. And uh, yeah, now the boys are just loading up and we're gonna catch them on film, show you guys what it's all about. We probably paddled about four or five kilometers today and most of that has been rapids on the DePaul River. Some really like small class ones and some swifts and then also some bigger juicier sets like this last one you just saw. So it's been lots of fun so far today. So we have made it to the proper DePaul River now. We'll have two days of river travel. This morning we spent three or four hours lining our canoes and hitting some decent sized rapids. And now we're on a more wide, calm stretch. And the terrain here is like nothing we've seen before. It's, uh, there's like a barren aspect to it, but it's just like all glacial, cobble sized rocks, there's gravel bars. It's a pretty remote spot here. And, uh, yeah, this is going to be our days for the next two days traveling this river until we get to the next head of land. Got a pretty nice spot today for lunch. Overlooking this mountain and this river that's pouring into the Dupa. Alright, so we've made it about 26 kilometers so far today along the DePaul River and we've just been hitting a whole bunch of class 1 and class 2 uh, rapids pretty much the whole way down. It's been an awesome ride and just through some like beautiful, beautiful, beautiful wilderness. It's incredible out here. It's hard to like stay focused on the rapids in front of you when there's just like, <coughs> other than the bugs, when there's just so much beauty along the sides. Oh man. That one still feels like it's moving down there. It's really starting to hit me. We're only on day seven, just like where we are. Like we are remote, remote, remote. Northern Quebec, Nunavik. It's just crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. So we just made it to our campsite for day seven. Best site yet. Best site yet. Yeah. Best site yet, yeah, sure. Five star. Five star, world class site. With a view of both rivers.
just gonna throw me that ball. I want to throw it to me. <laughs> oh, nice catch. <laughs> <laughs> Here we've got pasta chili with a big bag of Parmesan cheese mixed in with it. Woo! Got ground beef, kidney beans, and tomatoes, and white beans. I think I put some chickpeas in here because they're good for you. All the fun seasonings. And a buttload of pasta. We've gone 75 kilometers in the last two days. We're all pretty hungry. Yeah, we need those carbs. Yeah. morning of day eight and it's about that time of the trip where you gotta start taking stretching a little more serious. Muscles are starting to cramp up a bit so it's a good idea when you have a dry floor and not a lot of bugs to stretch out those muscles a bit. Looking forward to mine. The boats are being loaded. Chaz here is just packing his final uh, toiletries bag, his day pack. I think we're all in agreement that this has been the best site by far. Yeah, definitely. I'd agree with that fact. Having ample room to sit down on dry floor yeah. is uh, something we haven't even experienced yet in over a week, actually. Many times we'd just end up getting to camp at the end of the day and we'd all be looking at the ground trying to find a spot to sit down and there'd just be like wet moss everywhere and none of us actually want to sit but we're so tired after a long day all you want to do is sit. It's a struggle out there sometimes. It's all worth it though. Oh yeah boy, it's a struggle. And then right off the bat we have ourselves the class... Class two. Class four or five right here. No, we just got like a little... I don't know if you can actually call that a swift. The rapids here aren't like they are in back in southern Ontario, Nova Scotia. It's not like one obvious line. It's the entire river just like moving water and like waves crashing over. So, so far on the Depa, any line you choose, if you just go straight, you should be fine. It's just big water. But we all know as we make it to Mistassin later on the trip, it's going to be pretty gnarly. So we're, we're trying to work a lot as a team and, and get ourselves um, more familiar with the spray decks. But this has been a great practice river to start the uh, the white water running. A lot of firewood. We should have come here last night. States to just like they really need 14 caribou. Yeah, that's just what they do. It seems it's ridiculous. He, she, killer slept here, filled three tags with one shot. So I, I, I know climate change plays a big role on the these caribou populations, but overhunting is obviously a huge issue as well. Yeah.
Oh man. Yo, do those look like claw marks? Definitely. <laughs> That's pretty messed up. <laughs> oh yeah, look at this. You actually see the nails. Not 10 minutes after leaving the hunt camp, we see splashing downriver. We first think it's a set of rapids, but we soon realize it's something much more exciting. Oh my god. With the population at a dramatic decline, we didn't think in our wildest dreams we would have a chance to see the George River caribou herd. We watched in silence as 30 to 40 caribou crossed the river. After, after catching basically no fish on the Depa for the last two days, we finally got a little brook trout. Finally. And isn't she beautiful? I love those colors. They never get old. No. We're going to let her grow so that she can grow. Go ahead, girl. Nice. Maybe that's good luck for us. Maybe, I hope so. Maybe we'll get some down the road. I hope so. But in the meantime, we've got a set of rapids to hit. Shorelines are starting to get a lot more sandy out here. And we're paddling ourselves through another beautiful mountainous landscape. Camps have just been littered along the river. And they look pretty run down and like they haven't been used in years. Yeah. Might need to take this on a portage. Two people can handle that. Fill her up. On our map, there was a class four rapid marked, and we would have to portage or run it before making to our campsite for the night. We scouted a line on river right that would take us through a boulder garden, but would effectively keep us away from the big water. With so many rocks, we were constantly readjusting and making reactive maneuvers over small pour overs and semi deep water channels. It was a little sketchy, but eventually both boats make it through. Let's go for it. Draw, draw, draw. All right, so we just made it to another big milestone for us on this trip. We're at the very end point of the DePaul River, or the end point for us, where it meets up with Party Creek, uh, where we're gonna be making our way over to the George River. Incredible spot here, once again. Beautiful mountains all down this river. We finished the day off with a, a class four, 
that we were able to kind of sneak down the side of uh, where we felt safe enough not risking too much out here and uh, now we're just catching some brook trout so that we can have a little bit more calories in our dinner tonight because tomorrow we have a 10k portage between here, the Depa River and the George River, uh, kind of following along uh, Party Creek. So super, super cool. The bugs are not holding back. The rain is not holding back. The brook trout are not holding back anymore, thank God, because we we're finally catching some fish. And uh, yeah, everyone's in high spirits. We're feeling good. Oh, Funny yeah. boy! Hold her up for the kids to see. Oh yeah. Alright, where's your buddy at? Over there. We made it to camp at a decent hour, and with rain stopping and a glimpse of sun, we decided to hike one of the mountains to get a better perspective of the Depa River, as well as scout our upcoming portage. So today was a special day. We finished our time on the Depa, and we're gonna be going up the Party Creek, across the height of land, to the George. We've heard a lot of bad things about this portage. It's about nine or 10 kilometers, and it should take an entire day. And just to give you guys an idea of what our route's gonna look like, we climbed to the peak to scout where we'll be looking tomorrow. And you can tell there's, there's a lot of mountains, a lot of bushwhacking. A lot of black flies. So despite having a massive portage tomorrow, we still decided to hike to the top of a mountain. You realize about halfway up that it was maybe higher than you thought it was when you just set out to climb it in the first place. <laughs> Worth it though. Jerry's still out on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little warm up for the uh, 10K portage we have tomorrow. Sounds like it's raining in here. I know. <laughs> click, click, click. <laughs> Tonight we were happy with our progress. We all had an uneasy feeling in our stomach of what the next few days would look like. The hard work was just getting started. Might be too tight. Might be too tight. A couple days ago when we were on the iron arm battling that crazy headwind, I strained a, uh, a muscle on the top of my forearm. It's been bugging me like crazy ever since. So to totally immobilize it so I don't hurt it anymore, I've just wrapped it up. And that's, uh, I cannot move my wrist. What's the hustle and bustle around camp this morning? <laughs> We're just getting ourselves stoked for this long portage we're about to undertake. So we're just getting our final gear all packed up. We have a pretty tight kit right now. Trying to condense as much as possible so that we limit how much we actually have to carry over uh, individually. So we're all packed up and we're pretty much about to start this 10K portage. We're gonna find out how bad it really is. We know it's bad, it's just how bad. The overland portage between the Depa River and the George River was first coined in modern day standards by Stu Coffin in 1982. Since then, only a handful of canoeists have attempted this route. The crossing in its entirety is approximately 30 kilometers and starts with 10 kilometers of portaging up the Party Creek, followed by pond hopping to the height of land and then finishing with a downriver paddle on an unnamed river. If all goes well, the crossing may take two to three days. So we're in the thick of it now. It's going through a spruce bog. She's thick. She's 
Fizdek! Ain't no portage when I'm gone, when I'm gone, <laughs> baby, when I'm gone. So we're on our way to a pond before the George River right now, crashing through this forest. The bugs are thick, the forest is thicker. Every once in a while we stumble upon a nice animal trail, such as this. And we make a couple extra uh, meters of distance. And uh, I think we've probably gone, I think we've probably only done about two kilometers for the day. Like we've been probably at this for like five hours already. Five hours, two kilometers. Yep. <laughs> As the day carried on, we slowly moved all our gear one load at a time. The packs were heavy and the work was a true test of our bodies and patience. But we all knew what we had to do. We had to keep pushing forward no matter how uncomfortable and tired we were because we had no other choice. Quick update here, it's 5.30. We've been portaging for all day, nine hours, all through thick bush. We finally came to another, a creek that we couldn't pass by foot, so we built a bridge with our canoes. Today, we portage between those mountains. The long, long, long day. And we're still going. I don't even think you can see all the bugs right now. They're friggin' atrocious. So bad. Oh. So we made it as far as we can go today. We portaged for almost 12 hours through animal trails, bushwhacking, blazing our own trails. But you know what? End of the day, no one's hurt. We didn't lose any gear. Godspeed, everyone. Long live the king. <laughs> and you know what? During this entire time, I've been keeping some friends along the way that have been living in my shirt. Hey, what do you got on your pants, buddy? These are all living inside of my shirt, dead. For the day. Yeah, they just they go in here, and then I guess I smack them, or they, they suffocate, and then they just fall to, to my pouch. How many bugs do you have on your head right now? About 9,000. <sighs> Hard to count. Yeah. Somewhere around there, though. Pretty close to it. Hey, good morning, everybody. It's morning of day 10. Uh, double digits, yeah. Uh, we're trying to find the height of land between the Depaw River and the George River. And we're gonna get there today, no matter what. Doesn't matter what happens. Right? <laughs> we're gonna get there today. So I think that's like, we have a still water, there's a surprise around the corner. We, it's a surprise, we don't know what it is. And then, 
we know we're pond hopping with a lot of portages in between. So we're just going to grind it out like we did yesterday and hopefully, hopefully, it's a little bit less work. But I'm not holding my breath on that one. <laughs> I wouldn't. It's going to be a good day. Go find a line, boys. We'll go find a line, boys. You just remember where we went and didn't get. Right from the start, the ponds were shallow and rocky, and required us to walk our boats as we tried to balance on the slippery rocks. Eventually, the ponds narrowed into a creek, and we were able to track our canoes along the shore. But as we made our way further up, the current became stronger. When will the boys get to the height of land? We don't know, but we keep going. When will the boys get to the height of land? We don't know, but we keep going. So we were trying to line up river, but uh, it got a little too hairy. So we decided to portage. And just as that was happening, we got hit by hail, believe it or not. But on this portage, we've got some pretty magnificent views. We're following right along a river here. You can hear it kind of crashing down below. Making our way to the height of land. Another height of land anyways. We have finished lining that river and we came to a glorious lake close to the height of land. But there is ample amount of water to paddle. It's crazy to think the last people to paddle through here would have been a long time ago. When will the boys make it to the height of land? The answer is now. We made it. We're on the lake behind this rock. And we think we're gonna try one last portage to flow down to the other side. Cause why not enjoy a little downflow, right? Yeah, but we're still kind of on the fence about this one. So we'll see. I think we're pretty committed at this point. The boys are already making their way down river. That looks like commitment, I don't know. <laughs> so we decided to do one more portage for the day. And obviously once again. Just a complete swamp, it's gross, but you know, better than having to do this first thing in the morning when your feet are fresh. Just get it over with while your feet are still wet. At least it's a little bit more open than the thick bush that we were blasting through yesterday. Yes, I know the chill you're spreading. And I know your eyes that burn And I recognize Your lonesome cold You are to me just like a fairy tale That I stroll through so all alone 
And I know your name It's winter cold Your gown is gray and blue But I'm so deep I feel Breakfast is ready. Awesome, man. So after that two day portage, we now have about a 10 kilometer unnamed river that'll take us to the George. Things are looking up for us. We happen to catch a few trout for lunch today. Show, show the kids, you got them at your feet? A uh, brookie and a lake trout. Maybe get a couple more for lunch because we haven't really had much protein recently. So yeah, it's looking good. We don't know where all the sets of rapids are here because there's no information but uh, they're really playful. They're like maybe class one technical, uh, maybe class, probably not class two, but they are a lot of fun. And I'd say we hit one class two, the one up above. All right, well maybe, yeah, we've maybe hit some class twos, but they've all been manageable. We haven't had to get out of the canoe once so far, and the fish are out. After all those days of uphill travel and portaging and bushwhacking our way, it is so nice going downhill. All these rivers just flowing into, into each other, it's just nice to have downstream travel. Easy living. <laughs> Easy, Easy living out here. I'll say it once, I'll say it twice. Easy living. See if the boys like a little Mickey fin in their mouths. <laughs> I, I wouldn't like that, so like try not to hook me in the face. <laughs> So we were running a set of rapids and we ended up getting hung up on uh, the bottom set where it was just shallow and rocky and we just didn't see where the, the V was, the deep water channel. But it turned into a great opportunity for us to bust out some fishing rods while we were stuck here and actually hooked into quite a few brook trout. Sometimes the bad things aren't always so bad. It actually worked out. Dave got us another brook trout. We're eating tonight, eh? Yeah, boys, we're eating tonight. Fish for lunch, fish for dinner. That's how you make a puree without a I've got the puree shot. All right, so the boys have been having a great day on the river so far, making our way to the George River. Lots of sets of rapids, lots of fish, finally. And so we found ourselves a nice spot here on shore to cook ourselves up a shore lunch. Sweet. Sweet city woman. After lunch, Alex and I switched seats so Alex could paddle stern down the final section of the river. Both Alex and I prefer the stern, so when we're running whitewater, we try to make it so we both have an equal amount of time in the back. Take the right side down. Draw. We're going right to the middle there and we're just gonna splash through. Yep. We came to a section where the river narrowed and dropped off a rock ledge. We couldn't see anything, so we paddled over to the island to scout if there was a line. F that! 
no way! <laughs> you can run that solo if you want. Yeah, there's no way that's happening. <laughs> Hard no! Hard no! It's like a waterfall! <laughs> Sometimes you just gotta know when it's time to do, make a portage rather than trying to run a set of rapids that looks like this. A little farther down river, we got to the confluence of the unnamed river and the George River. But before reaching the George, we had to negotiate one last set of rapids. Okay, I think I see it. So we're kind of hugging the rocks that we can see above water on the left. This one was more technical than the ones before. just below the surface that we couldn't see until we were right on top of them. Go left! Woo! We tried to bring the boat around, but we ended up getting hung up again. We're good, we're flipping around! This was a close call. Yeah, definitely, yeah. No, I'm not worried about that. Like, Yo, what content? What, what were the, oh yeah, like what were the bogs like going through there? Like, Take it away. Got ourselves a special day here. <laughs> hey everybody, <laughs> we have ourselves a special day here. Uh, we made it down uh, No Name River, AKA Topster River, AKA Leon River, AKA Riviere Leon. Riviere Leon. Anyways, the point of the story is, is that we've made it to the George River. So we've actually done the uh, Stu Coffin crossover, the height of land from the Depa to the George, successfully. Would you recommend it to others? Yeah, I would recommend it to others, yeah. It's, yeah. Something, it's something everyone should experience in Absolutely. their life. Absolutely, it's something, it's character building, yeah. Just don't lose your buddy's fishing rod. Yeah, we lost the rod today. Considering that's the only thing we've lost so far though, like, not bad. Yeah, but we're out here on the George now. Now it's just all upriver from here, <laughs> again. <laughs> so how many bottles of whiskey do we bring? Uh, I think we have six Mickeys of whiskey and they've all been used for special occasions. Dave bust out the first one, we did the first head of land and this is another big spot for us making it to the George. So we will have our second flask. So cheers to the river gods. It's been a hell of a ride to get here. And uh, we're not done yet. Traveling through these areas, I seem to have picking up chicken pox. Got them all over my body, don't know how I got them. But you can see here. Do, 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 do. <laughs> the chicken pox are all over the place. So bad. No, no, I have them all over my arm too. <laughs> oh my god. Chicken pox. I got them as a kid, so I don't know why I got them again. <laughs> so Noah and Chris have both been destroyed by the bugs in various places. Chris behind the ears and the neck. How's that feel? Feels pretty good. Feels good. <laughs> yeah. We got them pretty good and then Noah got it on the arms. I had a hole in here and I guess I think when I was carrying the canoe, they found the hole and just penetrated it. And they just lived in there all day. Just added to some of the pain crossing the idle land. You got another hole right there. Shit. Yeah, I'll tip that up. <laughs> so this is a rack that you can buy at your local IKEA. Just a sock drying rack, really. Dave, you modeled this off of an IKEA. Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, it's assemble yourself though. Yeah. Gonna dry those socks up real nice. Probably not dry. Maybe just heat them up. 
<laughs> so when you put them back on your feet again, it's not as bad. So, we've been having some trouble landing some fish. Uh, it's a bit of a bit of a chase and grab trying to get them into the boat when we're on the water. So I'm working on a net here. And right now I'm just cutting the cords for it. We have, uh, we already have the hoop bent that I did previously out of a piece of green spruce. Then just did a cord wrap, put it together and let it dry for a few days. And it uh, seems solid now. And now I'm just working on the, the net part. What's your strategy with the net here? So I'm just cutting a bunch of the same length strings from this cord here. So right now I'm making the actual netting part and it's pretty easy. I've got strings folded over and spaced out uh, evenly, more or less, between along the hoop here. And all it is is you take opposing strings and you throw in a quick overhand knot, both of them. Just try to keep it somewhat equal distance. It's not a uh, it's not a Swiss watch, so it can be a little off. And then, once you've completed a row, which I'm about to do here, you move on and you just take opposing strings again and tie those together. We got the weave here, and then all that's left is to do the final tie off the bottom and make it an actual net. And I'm just gonna go across here Grab two strings that are more or less across from each other directly. And then just take the four and do another overhand knot in there. And that'll leave me with enough tail here to connect Whoa. all the knots once they're made. Oh, I'm sorry, am I ruining your sound clip here? Sorry. I'll shut up. You just, Dave, shut up. We're doing things. <laughs> just stop talking. We're taking a video here, Dave. Very important. He only finishes this once. Oh man. There's product there. It's solid. That <laughs> looks so good. Solid. It's pretty melty. Yep. Throw some fish in her. Unreal. We got there. This is Dave's taco surprise with brook trout seasoning from earlier today. You'd order this online for like 30 bucks, but here it is. Get your wild brook trout on, boy. Dave, you've what? got two things going on with or two different heights that you can reach with your shoulders right now. Yeah, I do. This one goes real high. This one does not. Is the guitar helping? The guitar helps a lot, yeah. It soothes everything. <laughs> So it's day 12 out here on the George River. We woke up to very humid conditions 
He's like sticky out. There's no wind and it's extremely overcast. But uh, we're gonna be working our way upriver to Golan's Lake, which is one of the largest lakes we'll have to deal with. And the mosquitoes are so thick right now. This hurts so bad. So, so bad. By the river this morning, I went for a walk. In the sun, I feel good. It releases my blood. With over 15 kilometers to travel upriver, we stopped on the shores for a quick break and to have some lunch. As we got farther up the George, closer to Oxgolands, the river tightened up to become more bony with a quicker current. Look! Oh! Oh my god! Holy Look, you take me to shore? Noah has a massive salmon on right now. Although we were targeting lake trout, a trophy salmon took my lure, and I did not want to lose it. Oh my god, dude! Look at the size Holy of that thing! Shit. Oh my god! Dude! <laughs> Whoa! Buddy! Alright, man, you putting her back? We're putting this guy back to fight another day. Almost ready. Thirty three inch salmon. Crazy. guys that's unbelievable dude how's that for a fish holy oh well, man 33 inch salmon Atlantic salmon so sick man nice work <laughs> the nets are probably not gonna help these things are too big this one's definitely smaller oh that's a lake trout Going there with force. Skinny. Yeah. What? He's all ahead. It's been attacked. Yeah, we don't want him to get No. It's all head. <laughs> That's a real trip. <laughs> That's 
the weirdest looking lake road I've ever seen. Yeah, both sides though. Yeah. Or just this year got real big and I'll take that. <laughs> Dude, that was a weird looking fish though. That was. So we've been lining and tracking our canoes up the George River all day today. We had a couple sets of rapids that we had to portage around. But at the end of the day, this is one set of rapids that we didn't want to mess around with. So we created another portage just to be safe. It's day 12 out here, and we have finished the tracking up the George River. Day 13. All right, let me start again. And now over to Noah for weather. It's day 13 out here. Uh, yesterday we just finished tracking up the George River, and today we head to Golands Lake, uh, previously known as White Gull Lake. It's the biggest lake we'll see for a long time. Uh, a couple big crossings. It's about 40 to 45 kilometers of lake paddle, which we're stoked on because we've done everything but paddling in the last few days. And uh, we're stoked to get off this campsite because it's some of the worst bugs we've seen yet, which is saying a lot because every day is buggy. But uh, yeah, another day, another dollar, right? Want to just ferry across? What's that? Want to ferry across? Yeah. A little stuck up there? green. Drop it in the boat. <laughs> wow. That's an awesome fish, dude. So we've been battling against some pretty strong headwinds today while crossing Golands Lake and we fought our way to an island site by some moving water um, that we could pull over to to have some lunch. 
Our hope was that we'd be able to catch some additional fish in the moving water next to us. While we were here, uh, it seems like the clouds are rolling in pretty hard. We've been hearing thunder and uh, we know that a storm is going to hit. So we've actually hunkered down the campsite uh, with tarp and everything because we're expecting to get hit pretty hard here pretty soon. We got lunch in us, some pad thai with fish, and uh, now it's time just to gear up for whatever's about to come and smoke us. Alright, so while we've been stuck here in the windstorm, Noah threw a couple casts. Only to hook in yet again another monster lake trout. Oh, buddy! Man, that's an awesome fish. We're not really eating that much. Yeah, that's weird, eh? Can you huh. throw her back or are we eating her? I'll throw her back. Yeah? Hey, how, how much meat do we need? I don't know. We, we need meat though. So we've been having a pretty rough time with some of our gear out here, eh Chris? Oh yeah, this is the second uh, bag strap we've broken. Not good. Yeah. Brand new bags. Two brand new bags, two straps broken. So we have a couple of bigger crossings coming up that we're going to be doing a lot of carrying and having these bags in working form is pretty important. So Chris here has a, a hand stitcher, or what were you calling it? Uh, speedy stitcher. Speedy stitcher. Just lock stitch over and over and should be stronger than when she was before. Which wasn't very strong apparently. <laughs> so hopefully just strong. So hopefully, yeah, hopefully just passively strong. That would be great. It just needs to get us over two heights of land, you know? Yeah, that's it. Just two. All right, one down. That's awesome, man. We should just go around and support all the other ones while we're at it. I know. <laughs> so we're looking for Chris quality out here, not uh, not consumer quality. Yeah, this one hasn't frayed yet, but... So the weather has gotten a little worse. We've been getting circled by high winds and these dark, ominous clouds. Rainy days are perfect times for crafts like stitching your RCDS patch to your life patch. What do you got there? That little bannock. Your but first batch. What's that? Your first batch. First batch out here, I made a couple batches, but I'm definitely no expert. But I decided to uh, do half cornmeal instead of full flour. So we'll see. We'll see if it works. I'm gonna hit with a little spice at the end.
What is this? There you go. Some microgreens to finish her off. A maple bacon lake trout chowder. Already crushed. Already, already just sad. Ate it too fast. It's day 14 and we are stuck here on Golands Lake. The wind is keeping us put here because she's still very strong and we're kind of hidden in a, in a little uh, channel here but as soon as we get out of it we have a decent sized crossing to do and doing it with like the white caps on the lake right now is just not a smart idea. So we're just kind of waiting it out and uh, we're just having a quiet day which is actually a little bit nice, rest up the bones. camped right around here and we have to travel all across Golands. Those are some big crossings. And go north. <clears throat> Noah Booth has made a very, very, very terrible mistake. He's gone out fishing and the river has flushed him out. He's gonna fight the current and it is pouring rain on him right now. How's the weather? It's a little bit damp out here. It's damp, eh? How was it fighting that current? Tough. It was a combination of the current and the wind going down there. Yeah. That's a big fish. <laughs> like it has to be getting tired, my arm's killing me. one go 31 inches I'm gonna have to hold on to him for a second yeah it's already kicking oh. 
That was sick. Do you want to take us out for the day? Well, what happened today? We sat by the fire for a really long time and got smoked out in our chill hole for a while. Survival pit. While we waited for the winds to die down. Chris made us a lovely dinner. Some beef stew. We've got lots of fish. And we're just doing some dishes now. Wrapping her up for the day, feeling well rested. We're ready for, for what's to come, whatever that is. Sleep well, everyone. Sleep well. Good morning, everyone. It's day 15 out here. And today we got up a little bit earlier so that we could cross Golands Lake. We have some big crossings to do in some big water and a lot of distance to cover. So putting in as early as possible this morning so that we can get, uh, get across these lakes. Spray decks are on for good measure. Golands is the largest lake on our route. And with big lake paddling comes the uncertainty of weather and wind, which can keep you stranded for days. Other than its physical features, Golands marks an important milestone for us. Here on out, until we reach the Kogalik River in 200 kilometers, we will be traveling through land with essentially no information other than brief trip notes from a similar voyage completed by canoe legends Herb Pohl and Pat Lutas nearly 20 years ago. The conception of our overall route was based around this specific area and making it to the elusive Mistassin Lake, which is the site of a meteor impact from 36 million years ago. We would also be paddling the second known descent of the surrounding watershed, which included the Mistassin River, which drops 200 meters in elevation off the Labrador Plateau. The many variables and uncertainties that our team has faced up to this point has just been a warm up for what's to come. Another crossing under our belts. This would be a cool campsite in other circumstances. I know, I was saying that. Some big fish chilling out here, I bet. I bet. Too bad we don't have time for them. <laughs> so we are currently on the far side of Golands Lake. We've been paddling pretty hard all day. We haven't even stopped for lunch. But it's looking like we might reach about 30 kilometers for the day before one o'clock even. But you can see we're paddling some pretty big waters here. The mountains in the background are really starting to get barren and uh, we're just coming up to the Esker where we're gonna need to cross over into Lac Michaud. Welcome to the beach vacation of the north. Come out here, paddle two weeks, and get to a place like this. It could be yours. Just for a lunch. It could be yours for 14 days of paddling. You could see views like this. Eskers like this. Black bears like that. We did just see a black bear as we came to camp that was hiking over those far hills over there. Headed in the same direction as us. Going for the full reset on these clothes. First, I scrubbed all of these with soap and lake water. Then I boiled some water just to like really make sure we're killing everything in there. And we'll be good to go. Fresh, fresh for like the second half of the trip. Hey, what's going on? What a spot. So we are at camp here, and it's been so nice out, we decided to dry all our stuff. So we have a huge gear graveyard here. 
We also did a total reset on a lot of our clothes. We washed it in the, in the lake here, as well as used a little soap on the armpits and the downstairs to keep everything nice and kosher. And we're having an early dinner tonight to spend a little more time after dinner hiking this esker. That's not me, Lucky Spoon. Is that? Or that? Or that? Or that? Geez, we're a lot of options here. There she be. Still covered in peanut butter from yesterday. You know, this spoon's been on every camping trip I've ever been on. Really? Yep. Survived that long? Yeah, isn't it a miracle? It's really incredible, actually. Yeah. Just a little smoke bath. Could get rid of some of the bugs. We had it good for too long. Our whole last site, I thought I was going to be ready, like, full reset for the bugs again. It's a good little break for the mind. There's a, it's, a lot of, it's a lot of patience required to deal with that many bugs. Definitely. Staying calm when you really just want to scream like a maniac and run around like a maniac. Do you have a strategy when it comes to the bugs? Deep breaths. Into the nose, out through the mouth. What happens if you capture some of those bugs in those deep breaths? Oh, yeah, you clench your teeth to go there and you go... Chris, how do you deal with the bugs? I don't know. Just part of uh, being out here. You can't escape them, really. You just gotta accept them as part of it. What have you been wearing? The OG bug shirt. The original bug shirt. Elite edition. You zoom up in here, you're safe. Instant. Would you recommend those bug shirts to someone watching this video? <laughs> if you're coming to Labrador, 100%, you won't be able to even spend a day out here without a bug jacket. We maybe spent a day out here without a bug jacket, but it's, you have to, you'd, it's so rare. You'd have to get pretty lucky. So right off our beach campsite, we actually found the remnants of an old, what looks to be like an old shack of sorts. Maybe a cabin. Pretty cool, nonetheless. Wonder who was out here. So we just hiked up the Esker from our campsite, which is on that beautiful sand beach. We're also up here scouting our, our portage for tomorrow. And it is directly through this spruce bog to that lake down there, about a kilometer or so. So right now we're standing on an Esker. This is the first time I've ever seen one in real life. Learned a lot about these in school a few years back. But essentially, an esker is a, the plumbing system of a glacier. So if you can picture a big glacier, as it melts, it creates like rivers underneath it. And over time, these rivers like pull sediment through. And as the glacier is melted, it left these casts of the old rivers. And that's what we're standing on right now. If you're look at Labrador on a map, you can see them on, on the topography lines as like straight, like wormy looking things. That's Nesker. So we're up here, we're gonna do a hike to see if we can find any animal tracks or berries and stuff because it makes a perfect highway for animals crossing. What are those? Those are something.
Dave woke up in the pouring rain and wind to make us breakfast and coffee. It's probably about six o'clock right now and we're heading into the swamp to do a, uh, about a kilometer portage in the rain and the wind. We had one good day of sun, never two in a row, so part for the course. Oh Lord, I see what brings me here. It's a mother to all. So we have been busting our asses today trying to get to Lackney Show. It's been pouring rain on us. It's freezing cold right now. Luckily for us though, there's been lots of rivers that we've been able to just kind of like the, I don't know if it's the amount of rain that we've gotten over the last 24 hours or whatever, but uh, they seem to be flowing. So we're using them to our advantage and really just trying to stay moving because even making this video right now is making me freezing cold because I am just like soaked to the bone. Every ounce of me. I'm wearing a dry, like a rain jacket. It's soaked underneath and I'm uh, like, any sitting around time just gets you cold. So we're gonna keep moving on. We've got one more little stint to get to Lakme Show and that is technically where we wanted to get today. Noah and I have switched to one person hiking, one person getting to walk along the shore, just so you get a little bit of a mental break for a little bit. What you are walking on is just like so treacherous. Lots of just holes between all of these rocks. You're just constantly, constantly flexing that mine and constantly threatening to roll your ankles. And then all of this is against the current right now. As we got closer to the Lacma show, the current became a lot stronger and we were forced to either continue tracking our boats upriver or portage around a kilometer of whitewater. You're letting to move in a bit. The current's strong. Not wanting to portage, we stayed on the river. When tracking a boat up strong current, Yo, the boat angle is very important. If you Yo. open it up too much, the boat may swamp, but if you keep the angle too closed, you have little control. It was a constant game of working together around rocks and deep water channels. Game over! One, two, three! Wait, maybe I can pull it from up there. Eventually we were forced off the river and portaged the rest of the way. So we made it to Lackney Show. It was a real grind today. But at the end of every day, you tell yourself that at some point today, I will be dry and I will be warm. And that point comes right now, standing by this fire. We are dry and warm. 
make a hot meal after a cold day. What's going on guys? It's day 17 out here in the bush. We're making our way to the height of land today, hopefully, and that means we'd be crossing back into Labrador. We have a difficult day ahead of us. Weather's not looking any better. It's still windy. Good chance there could be some more rain coming our way. We're not messing around. We got ourselves a full Yeti filled with uh, like a Bengal spice tea, which will be coming with us for the ride keep our souls warm while our hands freeze. And other than that, this morning we're gonna be crushing out about 20 kilometers across Lac Michaud. And then it's just gonna be portage, portage, lake, portage, lake, portage, all the way to the height of land. So we found a beach in this cold, desolate lake. And the rule goes, never pass up a beach. So we pulled over for a quick pee and a snack on this uh, little, little slice of paradise out here. Look at those views. Can't beat them. We made it to the end of Lac Michaud, where a small creek marks the start of a string of portages and shallow lakes that we would take to the height of land. Pat Lutes wrote about this section. This area takes more work than the map suggests, mostly because the stream into Michaud consists of fast current over big boulders. Tough to paddle, tough to pull, tough to wade, unthinkable to portage. So you grunt it out as best you can. We worked our way slowly across the land. If all goes well, we would make it to the height of land and back into Labrador by nightfall. Where am I supposed to go? <laughs> You're almost there. Son of Today's been a pretty big day for us. We're probably getting close to 30 kilometers for the day and we've been portaging our butts off like crazy this afternoon but we are finally at the lake before our height of land crossing where we're going to be entering back into Labrador territory. There's just two options. Do we go here or do we go here? I think this one's probably shorter. I think we go here. Yeah, I it think looks this like less of a small. I think there's probably is. better camping on this side too. I'd agree. Yeah. <coughs> the Voyager's height of land code. A Voyager. A Voyager. 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 Rises early. Rises, Rises early. early. And retires late. And retires and late. late. A Voyager. A Voyager. A Voyager. Paddles hard in the day. Paddles, Paddles hard, hard in the day. day. And eats heartily at night. And eats, eats heartily, heartily at night. night. When the trip is done, when, when the trip, trip is done, done, they drink merrily. They, they drink, drink merrily. A voyager. A voyager. Relies on his team. Relies on his team. But a voyager. But a voyager. Also makes sure that the team can rely on him. 
Also, also make, make sure that the team can rely on him. A voyageur. A voyageur. Works hard. Works hard. Plays hard. Plays, plays hard. And respects the land. And respects the land. And a voyageur. And a voyageur. Will never sleep with another voyageur's wife. Will never, never sleep, sleep with another voyageur's wife. Boys. Cheers. Cel celebrate. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, my friend. Cheers. Holy smokes. Dare I? Do it. You. I I did it with mine. Did two full rotations. Tell everyone what the stakes are. If you mess this up, no one gets lunch tomorrow. And we eat you instead. Oh! A little on the side, but I think that's I think it survived. That counts. You all perfect. get to eat lunch tomorrow. Coffee and breakfast is on! So right here, I'm standing on the border between Quebec and Labrador. Another interesting thing about this boundary is that to my right, all this water flows to the Labrador Sea in the Atlantic Ocean, and all this water flows up to Ngava Bay in the Arctic Ocean. So if I pour my coffee right on this line, half of it's gonna flow to Ngava Bay, half of it's gonna flow to the Labrador Sea. Yo, don't waste too much coffee though, eh? No, but see that flow? It's, it's separating perfectly. Perfectly! No, there's some pretty cool phenomenons going on over here. What, what do we got? So these are known as erratics, and they've been dropped here from glaciation. And what's really cool about these is that they're eroding in place through wind, rain, and freeze and thaws. You can see it, it's literally breaking down in place and eventually it's just going to be a pile of, of rock and you can see older versions right over here they look like big ant hills but these were once rocks and eventually it'll become the topography over time that'll be a new hill it'll be a new hill noah's hill Got a uh, 31 inch lake trout that's been grilled and then diced up. 
Nice full frying pan's worth, really. The other question everyone's been dying to ask, where did you get that styling watch? Ah, yeah. You're bedazzled right now. It was a last minute Walmart special for the trip. <laughs> it's been like our lifeline for getting up early. Because no one thought to bring a watch before we got to Lab City. I think we accidentally pressed the stopwatch button a while back. It's just been running ever since. <laughs> We're up to like three or four days. Noah, how are you feeling? I feel a little rough today. Yeah, you're feeling a little rough. Yeah, my stomach's, you want me to take back over? My stomach's been hurting. Which has been... Uh, on your mind a bit? Yeah. Yeah. And I feel like every time I burp, I might puke. But it's one of those things you gotta, you gotta go through. Looks deep, eh? It does look deep, doesn't it? I'm curious how far down this goes. It's a long ways, I think. It, you know, it's definitely glacial. Like it has to be. So it's probably just a straight drop. But that dramatic? Woo! Unbelievable. You can still see some snow over there in the distance? Yeah, I just saw that, man. So oh, cool. going that way. We may have just rolled in on our nicest camp yet. Take a look at this place. Beautiful mountains. We got a breeze coming in off the lake. And we've got some premium camp spots. Lots of firewood. Really doesn't get much better than this. that standing deadwood. Gotta love it. Dry as a bone. So up here in the north, once trees get to a certain size, they're pretty well established. They can live for quite a long time. And you can kind of see with the rains here, we can't count them because they're too close together, but this tree is quite old, even for being so small, because the growing season is so short up here. So the one thing that can really do these trees in are porcupines. And if you see the bark is stripped in an interesting pattern here, and you can even see the teeth marks as the porcupines have come in and they chew and they eat the inner bark. That's how they survive. So what this, this porcupine did and how this tree died is it girdled it, which means it went all the way around. And by doing so, it removed the tree's nutrient transfer system from its roots. So the, the tree could supply sugars down to the roots through the internal uh, transport systems but the inner bark here will transfer nutrients up to the leaves or the needles in this case, keeping it alive. And without that, the tree dies. And that's what the porcupines have accomplished here. And then what we accomplish is by getting ultimately perfectly dry firewood. Yes, we got wonderful dry firewood standing, waiting for us. So thank you porcupines, you're do doing us a big favor here. <laughs> Definitely.
So it is the morning of day 19 and we're just having a quiet day out here on our beautiful beach site. Noah's not feeling so hot today. He's uh, got a bit of a stomach bug of sorts. So we're just kind of taking our time this morning. It's a perfect spot to be able to go explore. We're actually thinking of climbing that mountain. So Dave and I are just gearing up right now for our hike today. Revolutionary new gear setup that we've got going on here. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. And it's all, a lot of it's in the details. A really nice thing you can do for yourself is tuck your pants into your socks Ooh. so that when you put your dry pants on, they don't ride up or down and everything's in one nice spot for the whole day. And then another thing I do is I have these neoprene booties that I like to put on. Well, I don't like to put on. <laughs> but I put on anyways, over top. And then they protect the dry boot part of the pants. Many abrasions that are inside of my running shoes. Won't actually get through and cut your dry pants? Yeah, it won't actually get through and cut my dry pants. We put on our base layer first every single day. I've got a nice uh, quick dry shirt on here. I've got my quick dry hikers, pair of socks, now with Dave's new tip of tucking my pants into my socks so that they don't ride up, I take my dry pants, completely dry on the inside because I took the time to dry them out on the fire, slide into this puppy. We're just going to go into my Crocs for now. I tuck all of that inside, do her up nice and tight. And then these puppies, I'm just going to slide directly into my soaking wet shoes. It can be a little cold. Sometimes we heat our uh, shoes up just so that you don't have to put your feet into uh, something cold in the morning. And boom, dry pants are on. I've got a rain jacket that goes on over top. And this has been essentially my setup for the entirety of this trip so far. Gives you a nice warm place to put your hands too. There's no that pockets, so sometimes you just don't want to hold your arms up anymore. Because <laughs> you've been holding up like packs and stuff? 20,000 paddle strokes in a day. And then I always have my Crocs waiting for me at the camp for the end of the night so that I have something dry to change into while I dry out the slight moisture that you will get in here from like sweat or whatever. This has been a setup that has absolutely changed our lives out here and it's a necessity. Like there's just so much swamp and tracking up rivers. And loading and unloading the boats every day. The water's freezing. The water's cold. Like it, it just wouldn't be possible without it. So super revolutionary. If you're not trying it already, you should try it out. Just climbing around out here, it's been crazy how cool it is. Oh. Look at that. Whew. Barely any eyes will ever lay sight on what we're looking at right now. If this was in a more populated area, it'd be a national park. It'd be a million tourists up here, but there's not. Because I'll tell you, this isn't an easy place to get to. It's actually very hard. So worth it. This is pretty cool over here. You can see the definitive change where the tree line is and where you enter like just these barren, barren hills. But all around that lake is just forested. So it's pretty clear that we have something rolling in. As you can see on this side over here, pretty clear. 
But as soon as you start heading this way, it becomes a misty wall. Probably some more rain. Classic Labrador. Wind has died down a bit, so the bugs are like, yo, what up? I'm gonna come hang out for a bit. And they're like, I don't know if I really want you to hang out right now, to be honest. But then they're like, yeah, we're probably gonna hang out anyways. And then they just pick at your head, and your face, and your eyes, and you inhale them. Whatever, they're annoying. You try to just distract yourself with the beauty out here, you know? Maybe you don't know. Maybe that's why you're at home right now. And you're like, geez, I don't know. The views are really nice, obviously, but I just don't know if it's worth it. It is, it's worth it. Get out there, go explore, climb a mountain, get eaten by some bugs. It's all good for you. It's crazy to think that we are halfway on this trip right now. A little over halfway, day 19. Still feeling pretty good. Beginning of the trip, day four, day five, you're just waking up, you're like, wow, it's only day four of 35. And it's hard to like wrap your head around the fact that you're going to be out here for another 30 days, another whole month, one twelfth of a year, however you want to think about it. You take it a day at a time, you fall into a rhythm, the days just start going by so fast. Can't tell you how many mornings I wake up after a tough day the day before and you're just like, I, I honestly don't know how I'm gonna get through another day. And then it just seems to like you blink. It's like six o'clock and you've just hustled all day. And you're like, wow, where'd the day go? And now all of a sudden we're here at day 19 the amount of time that we have left in this trip, 16 days, is longer than my longest trip before this one, which was Wabakimi, 14 days. It could be easy to get overwhelmed by the length or difficulty of a trip. You take it day by day, step by step, eventually you've got yourself a 35 day trip. Surprisingly, it goes by really fast. One thing that I've really noticed on this trip, just with how demanding it is, the bugs are really bad, the weather can be really tough at times. One thing you really learn is to appreciate the change in things. Some days we have really long lake paddling days and we're like, holy smokes, my arms are gonna fall off, my core is killing me. You're like almost excited for a portage. And then you have a hard portage day, it's like, Jeepers, get me back in a canoe. All I want to do is get a couple paddle strokes in. Or, one day it'll be pouring rain and cold and windy, but there's no bugs. And then the next it'll be sunny and you're like, ooh, cool. Might dry some of my clothes because I'm soaked, but the bugs are really bad, so. And then sometimes the bugs just come and smack you no matter what. The point of my story was that eventually all the bad things just become good in small doses and you appreciate the change between them. I think that's what I've noticed out here. I don't know if that's really like a revelation or anything like that, but it feels like it. So, we're having a bit of a rest day today, and we're not Plan on moving, so we have a nice fire for lunch here. And we decided to take our bannock and one of our salamis and our cheese. I'm gonna pop this in the reflector oven real quick. Are those three bonus ones for the boys? They are. Nice. <laughs> Fried salami. Mmm. It's so good cooked. Oh my god. So much better. What are we looking at in here? We gotta find out if Noah's stuck. Pissing out of his <laughs> And if his pee is clear. I'm uh, just reading up. He's been down for a really long time. Let's find out if he's vomiting. 
at all. He's just diarrhea. He's been down for a long time. I don't know what time it is, but he's been sleeping for a very long time. Probably 18 hours now. Yeah. Not like him. No. Oh, we do have antibiotics. Yeah, but they're all this way. It's just got to stay hydrated. Backcountry grilled cheese. Some bannock, some fried sausage, and some cheddar cheese. Two mini sandwiches each, I guess. Unreal. Take a bite, this is the moment of truth. Here we go. Hold on. Alright. Yep. Did it work? It worked. Oh man. I don't think I can film this much longer. I think I'm gonna need to dive in. Dive in, man. Mmm. boys had battled ahead of us while we climbed a mountain to take a shot of them. When we caught up, they'd pulled over at a friggin' snowbank. Happy August. I thought it was gonna be like I more icy. Me too. And we're thinking this is snow that just never goes away. Yeah? Probably just stays. It's on a south facing slope. Most of the snow that we've seen have been on south facing slopes, according to Dave. Because the sun rises and goes through the north. Because <laughs> the sun rises and goes through the north in the summertime. So, the south facing side of mountains, not getting as much sun exposure, hence, we see snow in August. Boom. Dave, what happened, man? 
Hey everybody, so I took out a piece of gum this morning after we got into the canoe. It's pretty standard for, standard thing to, for me to do. Keep me occupied while I'm paddling in silence for most of the day. I put it in my mouth and I, I crunched down and I felt something like crunch down in the back corner of my mouth. And I kind of knew right away, but I kind of ignored it for a couple hours while paddling. And uh, I continued chewing the gum on the left side of my mouth here and left the right side alone, but I was playing around with it with my tongue a bit, trying to figure out what was going on, but trying not to uh, panic until we got to the beginning of our portage and I stepped out of the canoe and I just my brain turned off and I, the gum switched sides of my mouth and I bit down on it again and out came two pieces of my teeth one, two pieces of one tooth uh, with the piece of gum from the rear top right molar is essentially gone. So after the initial shock of, of realizing that half of a molar has just fallen out of your face, got my buds here to look at it. They, you know, went in there, had a good long look, and uh, I drank some hot water to see if there's any pain, and then I did some exertion of the body over the portage to see if there's any pulsing and I put my head down lower than my heart to see if there was any pulsing and uh, did all the things and and really there's there actually hasn't been any issues other than just being a small irritation top of my mouth where something has changed but we're hoping that the pulp or the nerve inside of your tooth is not inside my tooth is not exposed to the outside world that way I should be fine for the rest of the trip as long as I'm very conscious about what side of my face I'm chewing with and what I'm eating. Otherwise, if the pulp is exposed, there's a high, a very high chance of an infection setting in, which in, in the teeth is never a great thing to have, any kind of infection really anywhere, but face pain tends to be some of the worst kind of pain. So I have experience with this from the past, so I happen to know what I'm talking about. Three years ago, I lost this tooth on an expedition. Um, but this tooth was dead. I had a root canal on it previously, uh, and it broke when I was trying to untie a frozen knot. So it was my fault using my teeth as a tool, but it, the, the nerve was gone. There was no nerve in it. So it's kind of similar to what's happened here, but there is a nerve in that one. So I'm not sure what's gonna happen next. Uh, but we have lots of painkillers, and we have lots of two different kinds of antibiotics as well. There's not really a whole lot a dentist would be able to do, even if I were to walk in tomorrow. So we're just gonna play by ear, go to bed early tonight, get some rest, write in the journal. It's crazy, I went to the dentist before I left, I got everything checked up, I got everything fixed, I got the go ahead. You even have it, I have a fake new tooth at the dentist office waiting for me when I go back. So I'm gonna go get a new tooth and ask for a new one at the same time. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. It's like one of those things on these trips is like, we plan for so much, but you can never plan for everything. Yeah, and then I, I brought, I went to the dentist, I got dental putty, but like, Maybe it's sitting in the dashboard of my truck right now, like, who knows? I can't find it in the first aid kit, so. If it does get bad, I do have cloves, which we can grind down, or uh, boil in a little bit of water with a little bit of cotton, and jam it in there, and maybe seal it with some uh, pine sap. You know, we got ideas. I'm just gonna go to bed. Absolutely, man. Yeah. Get a good night's sleep. Thank you. We just rolled over the 400k mark. Earlier today, we portaged out of the Natakwanon headwaters into the Mastastin watershed area. So we're officially, the water that we are in now is officially flowing into Mastastin. Moving our way into the upper Mastastin River. It's super exciting. Which is very exciting. And Look at those contour lines. From what we understand, this is a very fast, bouldery creek. So very dependent on water levels of what rapids we're going to see and what's runnable and what isn't. Theoretically, you should be able to follow this all the way down. At least going by the contour lines, and Pat Lutas's notes, there's very little escape routes here. So we're gonna have to be extra careful here, especially given our remoteness. But then, after that little run, finally hit Mustastin Lake, which has been a major goal of this trip. Very, some very strange and interesting stuff given the fact that it's a meteor impact site and not a glacially formed lake like everywhere else in this area. 
it'll be a very interesting spot. Looking at all the contour lines on the outside of the lake, it's just like, what is this gonna look like? Very, very little information about this lake out there. Woke up this morning to some sputtering on the uh, roof, pitter-pattering, and I was just dreading waking up. It was my morning to get up and make the boys breakfast. So I set the alarm for 5.30, woke up, it was pouring rain. Noah hasn't been feeling well. Dave's tooth is chipped. I was like, you know what? I'm not gonna rush out there yet. So I got up maybe around 6.30, rain had stopped, came out here, got a fire going. Luckily I had stashed some stuff away last night, so we're all good. Fire got going pretty quickly, so we're warming up. But yeah, just a classic day out here, in the bush. Whoa, the official oh. awakening. He's back, He's looking dead. better than ever. I've been dead for the last three days, but I've, I've risen. You've risen. I've risen from the dead. <laughs> Kind of. I'm on the up and up, so. You're on the up and up. Don't push yeah. it. Yeah. But we're, we're happy to see you smiling again. Yeah. It's been a rough road, but. Would you like some tea or something, or? Uh, yeah, I'll look around, see what's up. <laughs> All right. We just knocked out our first 200 meter portage of the day. We've got quite a few to knock out today, but luckily a lot of them are pretty short. We managed to like sneak around a mountain so we didn't actually have too much elevation change. And then there was tons of animal trails that we were able to follow, so it was actually pretty clear. Like if you didn't know it was an animal, you'd think this was like a well-used portage trail kept by like park staff. Then with that being said, it's super surprising because obviously a lot of animals use this, that we haven't seen more animals out here. But maybe we're scaring them all off. Maybe four dudes coming crashing through the bush with a bunch of stuff isn't very nice for animals. And maybe I can understand that. What have we got here, Alex? We got a big brook trout. It hammered this spoon that I'm using right now in the rapids here. Chris was able to get me to shore, and uh, yeah, I'm just trying to tire her out so that I can get her in here. Oh, oh, it's a lake trout. Ah, it's a lake trout. Look at the colors Never of that Never mind, one. big lake trout. We'll take it. Holy smokes! Alright, so we had another great day on the water today. I think we paddled about 16 kilometers or so on the day. We've made ourselves some dinner, some fresh fish, some red curry lentils, courtesy of Noah, who has actually gone to bed early tonight. No, are you still awake? Can you say goodnight to the kids? Just say goodnight. Goodnight, everyone. There you go. Noah's in bed. He's feeling better today, though. We'll hopefully see more of him over the next little while. Mr. Green, how's that lentil soup? Mmm, it's delicious. Really good? It's very good. Oh, very lentily and red. Calorie dense. 
warm. Chris, you on bowl three already? Just the one. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We had leftovers the past few days with Noah down, so we gotta try and knock this out. I've drawn on here way earlier. But... Yeah. Oh, there's that pond. Oh, okay, yeah, you went to that one. I went or downstream what? of that one. Downstream of it. But even still, like, that's pretty short. Two kilometers. Yeah. It's like right so here. She's like open and depends on what it's going to look like. Today we would make it to the upper Mistassin River. I was feeling better, but far from 100%. Dave's tooth was broken, and an infection was a possibility. If things were to get worse for either of us, an evacuation would be inevitable. It was a quiet morning at camp as we mulled over our options, as we were approaching a river where we would be doing the second documented descent with little to no information and an unhealthy team. So we're getting very close to the Mistaston River now and uh, we've hit a couple small runs of rapids this morning but we pulled up to this one and you could just hear this one thundering. Even though it looked mellow up at the top we just pulled over, went for a walk to scout it and sure enough we're not even going to be able to line this one because there's a waterfall at the end. Yeah. 
Amen. Um, which way is the more water going? Can we go this way? Try to pull it out, but let's both be on this side of the boat. Yep. One, two, three. No, she's she's not gonna move. It's just like we anytime we move this now, we're risking pinning it on something else. scouting rapids it's kind of like your best call at the moment that you come to whatever you didn't see before so it's at the end of the day you didn't make the right call at the last minute <laughs> pull the canoe we've been doing this a lot though like and I think it, we were all just waiting for the humbling experience to tell us maybe we need to slow down a little bit We had our first humbling moment on the river today. Uh, Chris and I were paddling down, following behind Noah and Dave. It's been super bouldery, lots of like rock gardens. We've been lining some of them and then just running others. We didn't actually scout this set. We were just kind of making our way down. Nothing looked too crazy, but we have had to make some moves today that have just been like a little risky. Chris and I were heading down and we had a rock that we had to get left of and we tried to gun hard left, but the canoe got caught on a rock that was actually like mostly submerged underwater and just happened to be in the right spot. Pinned our canoe up against the rock and in our efforts to get it off, she ended up completely submarining and filling with water and then at that point the whole canoe just wrapped around this rock, so. We took on a bit of damage on the canoe here. No leaks. Pretty severely folded in a, in a couple areas. But yeah, it was just a bit of an eye-opening experience for us and uh, really humbles you on the river. We've been saying it all along, patience is key out here and you know, trying to push down and make distance on all of these sections. Um, you know, these things can happen. So that is why we went with these boats and this thing popped right out luckily doesn't seem to have any leaks so we're gonna load her back up again now it's taken some time to have some lunch warm up by the fire and we're just gonna continue on down river but definitely something that uh, we want to be a little bit more cautious of as we continue on what do you boys think of this we're just like out flat here. water it's like a good campsite
Oh, how's it going guys? Great to see you here. We've had a long, tough day on the Mustassin River. Uh, again, this river's only been run once before, and there's probably a number of reasons why. It was an absolute gong show today. We might, we might have gone like three kilometers, and we're slowly making our way to Mustassin Lake. On that note, we also wrapped a canoe and uh, had a couple falls on portages. But on a good note, I'm back for my four to five days of just pure hell. I have a serious case of the runs and um, it totally crippled me. I was probably going anywhere from six to 20 times a day. And that included multiple times in the middle of the night getting up in mosquito infested um, swampy areas and it's raining. It, yeah, it's been pure hell. But yeah, this area is absolutely beautiful and that's one thing we gotta remember. It can be a lot of work to get here, but when you just take your head out of the mosquito net and just look around, we're in a place that's been rarely seen by human beings. And it's amazing. There's caribou moss everywhere. The geology is insane. It's, there's these Arctic char running in the rivers. It just, it's amazing. But it's hard work too. I don't know. Alex, I was telling the folks that we had a hard day. And uh, how'd you end it today? Well, going back a little bit, on one of the last portages, I was carrying all my stuff and I stepped on some caribou moss that looked flat, but there was like actually a slanted rock underneath and I just dropped like a sack of potatoes carrying the bare barrel and a couple other things. And then I get to the campsite and I just want to dry out my pants for a second, so I went to pull my pants down. <laughs> my bug net got completely singed. Completely unprotected from the bugs out here which if you've seen Noah's temple is not cool oh boy there's like still bits of dead bug in there yeah it's just part of me now so luckily I brought a second headdress which I will be wearing I brought an extra headdress as well oh, yeah. Fair point. <sighs> want to be safe it's been a long four days uh, zero energy thanks to all you guys all the boys um, really helped me out by um, by uh, doing a lot of my load when it came to food uh, portages paddling I was pretty much just a sack of dead weight for the last four days but um, I think I'm pulling through I'm starting to get my humor back at least um, did a, a pretty messed up day on the river today and I feel all right um, and yeah, maybe you guys will see in the next few episodes a um, little more commentary from me. So. We're looking forward to it. Yeah. Glad to have you back. Thanks. Glad to be back. And those temples. Juicy. I'm looking for the black fly fever. <laughs> it's not that, helping you on your road to recovery, eh? Isn't that a, a disco song? Maybe. Alright. You could make one. What's going on guys? Alex here. Today was a really tough day. Today was a really, really, really tough day. And we're now at our campsite and we're kind of unwinding, hanging out. And there's a big mountain behind our campsite that has a view of Mistaston Lake, something that we've been working towards. Well, we've been working towards every part of this trip, but Mistaston Lake is the impact crater site that definitely interested me a lot and it's now in plain sight. Way out over all of those barren hills. That is what we are heading towards. Paddling along the river that you can see down there which just winds its way all the way until you get to that lake. It's humbling days like these that uh, just give you a big respect for the river, you know? It's what uh, we had been riding rapids most of this trip, barely scouting. Most of the time we were able to see most of the set, so it was just like these small little things that would come up, like a small hole or a pour over that you could like pretty much nine times out of ten get over 
we're looking at the slope of the rapids too like if one has a huge drop off and you can't see the bottom it's like we're taking our time but at the end of the day you're only as good as the last move that you make and we were running a line and Noah and David just done it just before us and they they hit it pretty much perfectly humbling experience but uh, yeah it just shakes you up a lot you know like for the rest of the day you just you've got that like lack of confidence and then the rest of the day just wasn't a great day for me I fell on a portage uh, I lit my bug net on fire as soon as I got to the camp so today is a rough go to for me but it's nice to kind of get up here be able to lay eyes on like what we're working towards here and uh, you know just rest up tonight knowing that we got some big days ahead of us and that's all right we're just gonna put one foot in front of the other we're gonna get there we're gonna do it Last night I had a pretty catastrophic event where my bug net got burnt. Last night I did a little project in the tent. We were back in business. Holy smoke, it's like you have a new, entirely new bug jacket. Yeah man, I'm like safe in here. It's got some weird folds and stuff in it, but I don't know. I feel like I can like navigate a portage pretty good in it. So when you were cutting that bug net, did you realize now you're committed to doing a full rebuild of your bug jacket? Definitely. There's actually a couple guys in here they must have gotten in. Um, yeah, it was a little scary cutting that net last night. I thought for sure, I was like, this is do or die right now. It's either gonna work, or I'm literally gonna have no bug net and I will actually probably die out here. The bugs are so bad, I just like, you need the reprieve by being able to go in here. If you don't have that, I don't know, like I literally don't know what I'd do. Good morning, gentlemen. Everyone Hello. Everyone should paddle the Mist Aston. It's a nice, beautiful, lazy river. <laughs> <laughs> So lining and tracking is one of the most dangerous things we have to do out here, hands down. And right off the bat today, we were lining the boat down a set and I slipped on a rock and I went back, I grabbed some bushes, but I landed right on my hip. And this is what can happen if you're not super, super careful. She's gonna go black and blue, I bet. Oof, it's already swelling. Oh, I bet. She's not gonna feel very good in the morning. No, definitely not. But it's. The good thing is, it's easy to keep it cold out here. Yeah, no problem there. No problem there. Cold and damp. Yeah, no problem. Gotta be careful out there. Yeah, be safe, kids. Aston River rock and roll for you kids. So we've crushed a, a decent amount of distance on the Mistassin River this morning. Uh, we were actually able to run quite a few of the sets and uh, now we're in the flat water section which is just like kind of cruising current which is a lot of fun. We're just going to see how far this will take us before the meat picks up again. So we're nearing the end of the Mistassin River and we started noticing Labradorite in a lot of the rocks. And uh, that's pretty cool to see. 
What it is, it's a type of rock that it has like a, a shimmer to it almost. I'm not sure if you can see it on the camera, but with the right light, there's um, there's like blues and purples and greens. And it's it's almost like glass. And it's uh, it's definitely re it's definitely a, um, a rarity to find something like this. And it's everywhere out here. So pretty cool. If you know anything more about Labradorite, I'm no Labradorite specialist, so please comment below. Uh, I'd love to know more about this. It's It looks really cool, but um, how is it made? I don't know. Sad to say, but this is where we leave the Mistaston River, heading into Mistaston Lake. We debated continuing on. That river does eventually flow into the lake, but it looks pretty treacherous from a quick scout. And uh, we're thinking we're better off doing the 900 meter portage from here directly into the lake. That way there's no questions. We are at Mistaston Lake. Friggin' crazy. We've been working 23 days to get here from Menahic. And it is just blowing my mind looking out over this right now. Signs of people. These aren't me. There's someone else. People. People. Person. What are these things you sit you speak of? Single person right here. Crazy. And down there are bear and wolf. Very clear. Huh. Yeah. Super cool. This is not the ocean. This is Mistassin Lake. The jewel of a lake that we've been searching for the last three weeks. Chris, did you see all the berries on the ground? Couldn't stop crunching them. Literally, you made jam as you walked to get here. It was nuts. A lot of crow berries. But uh, yeah, this is insane. Like This is like a, t a total ocean view here. But we're actually in the middle of nowhere. The Staston Lake is also an impact crater site. We've probably said that before, but that's what made the lake it's a monster meteor back in the day. What are the chances that a meteor hits in the same place? Um, what are the chances? Yeah. Like one in two? Yeah. yeah. Every one in two meteors hits yeah. in the exact same spot. Yeah, I'd say 50%. Yeah. We should be good though. Yeah. This is the first time we're seeing the sun in what feels like about 10 days, 8 to 10 days I think. Since the, es the site on, our, on the Esker, there's been no sun. It is the morning of day 24. We're here on Mistaston Lake. We had some pretty interesting uh, news that we got yesterday. Uh, we found out from someone back home that a plane had gone down on Mistaston Lake on July 15th, which is the day that we started this trip. And um, there were seven people in the plane, three bodies have been recovered, but there's still four missing. And there's maybe still a search uh, and rescue crew on this lake. Crash happened three weeks ago, so we're thinking the likelihood of someone still being alive out here is slim, even after a plane crash, so um, 
Yeah, we're gonna paddle on and we're gonna go check out the Eco Lodge at the end of the lake, which apparently has, um, or was apparently where the search and rescue crew was actually staying. So maybe they're still there, or I don't know, it's been three weeks, maybe the search has been called off. Who knows? It's the limited information that we've got out here, but just super eerie feeling around camp this morning. The sudden news of what was happening around us had our team lost for words. Not only was it the first time we thought about other people, these men were out searching for the same experiences as we were, which really made it hit home. It was a quiet morning as we tried to process the news in our own ways, with the very limited information that we had. So we are out here on Mastastin Lake right now, paddling through the foggy weather that we're currently having, and Noah has hooked into something. Lake monster. Oh yeah. Wow. Wow. Just like football, dude. Great fish. We are currently on Mistastin Lakes Island, the big island right in the middle of Mistastin Lake. This lake was created by an impact crater many years ago, and the island was formed by a reactionary uh, effect after the impact crater would have hit. So if you think about like a rock when you drop it into water and the water splooshes back up again in the middle, like that's essentially what has created this island in the middle of the lake. So we paddled to it, it's super misty out today. We actually made it here using a compass bearing and uh, we just paddled for like an hour into like nothingness until finally we could just start to see the shore after like an hour. And then uh, we're here. So we're gonna walk around, explore a little bit, and see what she's all about. Never seen anything like this. This is a very special spot up here. It really is. Yeah. Is A young Christopher wanders through the barren lands of Labrador, feeding mainly on blueberries and other small shrubs. This man is at home, peaceful in the barren lands, not much of a worry at all. As we paddled away from the island, we started to hear the pulse of a helicopter. Out walked a man we would later know as Rich Martin. I think he was as shocked to see us as we were to see him. Rich explained he was part of the search party, but there is no new information, 
and they were heading back to the coast that afternoon. We said our goodbyes before we brought out a gift that was the best type of morale boost that we could have asked for. Yo, what did we just get? Beer in the middle of nowhere. A our, our beer delivery. Oh my god. And Dave, you might have a pack of smoke waiting for you. Might, might just there, boy. The craziest thing. Doing down the lake and the bird comes over. She spins around and she lands right beside us. Can't believe it. Can't Holy believe it. smokes. 24 days. How far are you walking before you crack one of those, Noah? 24 days and Rich falls out of the sky and gives us an eight pack of beer. 24 Insane. days. My god, boys, what just happened? What just happened? The helicopter came down and an angel. Pass me one of those beers. An angel named Rich. Oh my god. Sir, your boys drink beer. <laughs> Do we drink beer? I've had one I think once. This was the first thing first thing he said, pretty much. Your boys drink beer, pretty much. <laughs> no one will ever believe that story. We're in day 24 in the middle of Nowhere, helicopter drops, comes out of nowhere, gives us an eight pack of cold beer, and then takes off. That's what dreams are made of. That is what dreams are made of. On Mistaston Lake, after 10 days of rain, today's like our only sunny day, and we get an eight pack of beer. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? <laughs> Day 24, I don't, almost don't remember what beer tastes like. Rich landed this helicopter on the beach and gave us an eight pack of beer, which is just like crazy. Middle of nowhere, Miss Daston Lake, lands a helicopter and gives us beer and has also invited us to go check out their camp, which is just down the lake. And what's there potentially? There is apparently the potential that there is a flat of beer and some fresh fruit of, I don't even know if it's fresh, they have fruit there. It's gonna be potentially awesome. It's 100% gonna be awesome. It's gonna be awesome. There's even beds that apparently we can use. You think that was a goodbye? I think so. Pretty filled with people. I think that was a goodbye in helicopter talk. Yeah. It's been a while since I've spoken helicopter. Maybe this is bigger than I thought. What do you got on the line here? I'm not sure yet. I'm hoping a char. You can see her flashing over there. Just hammered right after that point. Holy smokes.
Oh Look my at that. gosh. You have a little higher drive bags in your way. There you go. Holy smokes. What a catch. Oh my God. We're gonna let her go, but I need a photo first. All right, time to let her go. There she goes. There she goes. Nice. Oh man. That is so sick. It's a beauty. It couldn't have happened in a better spot. No, not at all. Oh, man. All right, so we've just pulled up on the beach of this lodge that we were told we should come and pay a visit to. Look at this place. You can see there's a main cabin over there. And then just a bunch of like bunky style cabins off to the side. This one has panels, tons of wood. You can say they've rigged the place to bear proof it. Don't want to step on those. And the place was all uh, locked up. So Rich Martin the pilot of that helicopter had told us that the doors here were just shut by a nail and said to go in and grab some food and left us like a whole bin of leftovers including a flat of beer. Flat of beer. So the boys have been crushing peanut butter and banana and jam sandwiches just living up all this food that is left here right now. That's chocolate milk. Never know how to say these words in the middle of Labrador. As you can see behind me, the weather is changing a little bit. And it looks like we might have a storm on our hands. We'll be happy to be inside tonight, inside this cabin. Tonight we party. Saturday night on the Nastastin, the boys are eating food. Like I was going with Yukon Blonde there, but I just totally ran out of lyrics. Yeah, no, it's awesome, man. So but it is our Saturday tonight. We, uh, this is our vacation from our vacation. What seems like unlimited beer and uh, a box of food that are, that Rich the God helicopter pilot dropped off for us. We probably all crushed at least four or five peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And uh, there's more to crush. There's more to crush. More Apple beer pies. Drink. There's an apple pie, there's an apple pie. Who would have thought day 24, in the middle of nowhere, we'd be crushing apple pies and um, cold Coors Light. Not, Not me. Not me. Oh shit, two twenties? Close them up. I'm driving up north on the trans Canada We enjoyed the cabin's comforts and felt blessed with the bounty of food. Not as sweet. But we couldn't help but reflect on the circumstances that brought us here. We all felt a roller coaster of emotions, and at times like this, you really do feel humbled on how quickly things can change. Should I stay with you? I know. Should I stay for more? Should I stay with you? I know. This is the mustache and skillet. What we got here is potatoes and onion as the base. Then we chopped in black forest ham and barbecue smoked chicken. And on top of that, we had some seasoning, eggs, cheese, and then kind of steamed it with extra butter. 
don't know if my arteries are ready for this. They never will be. I'm gonna ruin this masterpiece. Oh boy, look at this. I don't know, I'm not sure that after 24 days of trip food, we're gonna really wanna eat this. <laughs> I don't know. Looks suspicious to me if you don't rehydrate it first. Oh, man. Peanut butter, banana, Nesquik chocolate syrup. We spent the morning rotating around the frying pan, and each time getting more creative with our new ingredients. We all decided that today we would take a rest day, and use this time to recharge and catch up on our journals. There's day six, jamming lake, 41 kilometers. We're jamming. Cramped in the canoe, wet bottom equals swamp ass. We're crushing distance. So today we decided that we'd have a rest day and spending a lot of time in the cabin just literally just sitting there eating. But uh, we were getting a little cabin fever, so we decided to go for a walk and see what, what's around. You can see behind us, this is the village that we've had to ourselves. Actually really nice, it's well built and it's everything you'd really need for, um, for living, really. But yeah, we decided uh, this might be a good opportunity to just maybe climb a hill or two before we crack into the Coors Light and have some more food. Saturday night round two. <laughs> yeah, round two. Yo, what do you got there? I think it's a wolf skull. Its teeth look really dulled out, but it looks like those are the fangs. Crazy. Do something cool. Am I on video right now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do you think we're close enough? I don't know, man. We're like, like, should we just touch it? I feel like we go give it a quick touch. Just to say hi. <sighs> Alright, let's go. Welcome to Mont Mistaston. What do you got to say? Well, I just want to let you guys know that it's August and we're standing on a lot of snow right now. Tough to paddle in this, eh? Yeah. Should have brought our skis. Be a little treacherous actually trying to snowboard on today. Eh? Definitely. There's a human approaching us, crashing through the trees. Ahoy! Fancy meeting you boys up here. How's it going, man? Going pretty great. Did you climb any cool mountains? Yeah, I went over there. I climbed that one over there, that massive one. No way. Yeah. That's covered in fog. I just completed one of the hardest things I've ever done on this trip. So I'm going up that hill, and I hit like that fog line. See, see like that first hill? I hit that fog line. And I'm like, well, I can't really see anything beyond here. There's really no point in going up. But then I keep going up. And then it starts to flatten out and there's these two small ridges on either side of me and it descends into a little swamp. Then something, there's a little arctic cotton grass was blowing in there and something caught my eye in the swamp. And there's just a little, little tiny bit of salmon pinkish orange looking at me. And I thought it was that two-toned cotton grass. We have the white ones and we have that orange one, but it wasn't from something else. And in this little valley, Filled no. with cloud berries. No. And I brought you guys back some because I know you've never tried no it before. No way. What? I gorged oh. myself. 
and then realized that I had a plastic awesome. bag. Dude, I was totally wondering how this was going to relate back to food. Always <laughs> I know, food. I know the most difficult things for you revolve around not being able to eat something or yep. having to wait to eat something. I'm generally a fair person, but when it comes to berries, I Get do your not own. give up. Get your hands off my berries. Yeah, you, you gotta fight me for them, but I felt guilty eating all those cloud berries. Or bake apple, as they call wow. them around here. They're those like nothing really else. Yeah. Those are really good. Thanks, man. No worries. We'll save a few for Dave. Yeah, definitely. I'll try some of that. I definitely will. Thank you very much. What yep. does that taste like? Mm. Apple pie. There's definitely some apple in there. There's some apple, a little bit of raspberry. It's, Crazy. it's, it's impossible to place. It's a special flavor. I gorged myself on them. Night, boys. <laughs> you guys were all supposed to say good night, so it'd be a good ending clip. But I realized that if I was standing over here, you'd wonder why the hell I was standing on this side of the room. We all look over at your bunk, like, what? Where is he? <laughs> well, why are you going to bed in the kitchen? <laughs> Yo, what day is it? That's a good question. Day 26. 26, you're right. Today we're heading back on out to the river. We're gonna be hitting one of the most anticipated parts of the entire trip. The Lower Mistassin River, very, very, very little information on it. And we're gonna slowly make our way to a 75 foot waterfall that we have to portage around. Yeah, I'm actually really looking forward to getting back out there. We're just cleaning up around the place, tidying up, trying to leave it better than we found it. We've got a little coffee on the go, we did the dishes. I'm ready to get out of here. Hit the water. Don't think the bears are getting in now. Let's get back to our rugged lifestyle, boys. The Lower Mistassin River flows east towards the Labrador Sea, and like all rivers on this side of Labrador, it drops quickly in elevation as it pours off the Labrador Plateau. From looking at our maps, we can expect a lot of whitewater and waterfalls, with limited places to leave the river in case of an emergency. Once we were in, we were committed, and our plan was to proceed with an extra sense of caution. This river can make or break our entire trip. With these larger sets of rapids that we're hitting now, it's really important for us to be scouting them before we get ourselves into like a sticky situation. So we're just taking our time today. Ready, Cheech? Just take our time through this. After a few manageable sets of rapids, we started to hear the familiar rumble of white water in the distance, though this sound was much stronger and deeper than anything we've heard before. Yeah, 
So we have just arrived at the big 75 foot waterfall on the, on the lower Mistaston River and holy smokes this thing looks so epic. So we made it to the top of the mountain next to the waterfall so we can scout what's below in the gorge. I wish that this filming would do justice to this, but I am betting any money it will not. But we're gonna try for you, because you at least need to see that this place exists. And then hopefully, one day maybe you'll travel it as well. So we've loaded our boats with gear and we're just slowly lowering them down this very steep section. You have to be so careful in here. Start our final descent. All right. Wait, wait. I got it. It has to go in stages. Nice, boys. Coming to you live from the bottom of the waterfall. The water is crazy turbulent in here, creating massive, like, swelling wakes. They've been kind of coming over the edge of the boat now and then. Yo, what do you think? I'm a little terrified, to be honest. Yeah, it's pretty crazy in here. Yeah. Let's get out of here. Yeah, let's go. drops off to the abyss. No. Yeah. <laughs> While checking depths of this gorge, Noah has hooked into a fish. I was trying to count like every reel was a foot. Yeah. Seems like she has some weight. I did not want to deal with the fish. <laughs> it's 
It's a nice fish. <laughs> you caught it in the gorge too. It's kind of cool. Your fly rod's off the back right now, it's fine, but we're going towards the wall. We're going to hit a decent set of rapids here. Yeah, maybe we should pack up. Four of these, and just paint the braided part of your pants. So after an amazing day on the river, we find ourselves once again in a spruce swamp, our favorite place to camp. Making it work, as the boys do. Noah, what do you got for dinner tonight? Uh, kind of a take on a burrito. We have pulled pork and beans that we rehydrated. And then I also have extra quesadillas from a past lunch. So I'm putting the quesadilla on the bottom. Then you put your, your mixings on the top. And then on top of that, you add a little cheese. And it's kind of like a, uh, like a backcountry burrito, you can call it. Effort. Oh man. 100%. So one of the key repairs we've had to do over here is fixing our dry pants. So Dave's got a hole in his right now, and Chris is going to repair it up with some aqua seal. That's all it is. Do you just do it to one side? Yep, generally just the outside because um, that's where the water's coming from and like with these tears, these pants are a little older. So these are more abrasion holes than anything else. And by sealing around the abrasion, extending beyond where the actual hole is, you're actually protecting the rest of the surface that's weakened. And then when you get little pinholes like this, it's the same, same process. You just cover up around them as much as you can. These small leaks are hard to pinpoint and they really they let a surprising amount of water in more than you would think. That should do us for now. And this just uh, dries overnight. AquaSeal has a accelerator so it's a separate little chemical you can bring to daub on top that will have a cure in two hours if you really need it, but oh, that's cool. if you're just smart of when you do it and do it at the end of the day, you don't even notice that it takes overnight and it'll be done and ready to go. It's awesome, man. Chris, the repair guy. <laughs> These have been totally soaked for the last uh, 27 days. But that's okay. Uh, yeah, it's all right. Did your feet are dry inside? Ah. Uh, that's questionable I now too. I use that word loosely. Yeah. They're not sopping wet. So second day on the lower Mistaston. We did the big waterfall yesterday. And today we have about six kilometers of unmarked rapids and potential Liftovers, portages. We don't know the extent of the rapids. They could be beefy, they could be not so much. But that'll bring us to the next portion of this river that has no information on it at all. But we're gonna do a big scout to see what's down there. A lot of scouting, a lot of rapids, a lot of grunt work, a lot of exploring. Just some exciting stuff. Always exciting stuff.
that is what we were trying to avoid. Wouldn't have been fun going over that in a canoe, I don't think. Portage wasn't so bad. Getting more rapids. another grind out here just bouncing basically waterfall to waterfall but this is another gnarly set that we've had to get past we've only gone about 2.5 kilometers out of the 5k that we need to do and we can already see another like waterfall up ahead so we're just bouncing waterfall to waterfall and carrying over So we're at the next waterfall and I think we see a line. I'm just kidding, we're not running this one. It's another epic waterfall that we will have to port on. We're back in the gorges again. You have a beautiful place, eh? Can't see your face because of all the bugs. Some might say it's gorgeous. We got another waterfall here. Another big one. Another big one. We've got about another kilometer on this incredible river, and uh, just another beast of a waterfall out here.
What we've decided to do is, since we had to carry up and over a friggin' mountain, we actually stopped about halfway at the very top where it gets kind of flat, and we're gonna camp there for the night. Noah and I brought the canoes down to the bottom on the other side, and uh, we're gonna spend the night at the top of this mountain. That's pretty much it. I'm exhausted right now. I'm gonna go join the boys. They've started making some food, but I just had to come back down here to get one more shot of this waterfall because it's just like, it's incredible. It's super, super nice. It's lifting. Who says there's no live sports out here? <laughs> Flipping panic. In about a kilometer, we're gonna be actually portaging off the river to get to the Kogaluk. And instead of sleeping in a swamp down there, we decided we'd sleep in this uh, higher section of the portage that we half ran today, with the anticipation that the wind would keep the bugs away, but that is not the case. They are still terrible. But it's not a bad campsite. Man, this stuff scares me. Yeah. What Don't read it? the back panel either. What do you got there, buddy? Like 100% deep. I'm actually a little bit afraid to use this. There's no doubt that today was a hard day on the river. But we all knew tomorrow would prove to be even more difficult as we approach the final large crux of the expedition. It's day 28. We had an awesome campsite on top of a mountain last night. Today, we're gonna be checking out the lower uh, section of the Misasin River that uh, we're, we're likely not gonna paddle, but we need to go check it out. It's been undocumented, so we're gonna take some photos, some videos, hoping to fly the drone there later. Once we're done that scouting slash exploring mission, we're gonna head up to the Kogaluk. And we got a whole bunch of portaging, probably like five or six kilometers of actual portaging, and. We're not exactly sure what the terrain's gonna be like yet. Yo, what up everybody? We're just at another crazy waterfall. It might even be higher than the first one that we passed. And it still keeps going. She pulls down here and then just goes down into another gorge and she just keeps going, going, going. The Lower Mastassin is our final large crux of the expedition. Our team lost sleep thinking about it because we knew the danger and uncertainty that would come with our next decision. We knew we had two options. Option one is to go downriver, where we would be committed to a canyon and have no choice but to run whatever the river had. If we were to come across another large waterfall or any sort of large obstacle, we would be in a very bad situation where leaving the river or even an emergency evacuation would be nearly impossible. The other option was to bypass the canyon and portage about six kilometers over the north rim to an unnamed creek that we would pray would have enough water to take us back to the main flowage of the Mastastin. This meant two to three days of portaging and faith that the creek wasn't dried up. Before making our final decision, we scouted down river to see if we could get a glimpse of the canyon. 
we were all very hesitant to bring our boats down and run eight kilometers of a mountain river blind. We decided the safest move would be to bypass the canyon and portage to the unnamed creek. The certainty of bushwhacking and bugs was more comforting than the uncertainty of certain death if we were to come across another waterfall in the canyon. soaked from first from rain and then since I've been saturated I got a whole new layer of just like sweat <laughs> and then in between there's like a sandwich of just dead bugs yeah it's like a total slime in there so we we're on the first of three portages between Mistaston River and the Kogaluk and the first one's tough she goes straight uphill we're still going uphill. I don't even. I can't even give you for how long, but it's been a couple hundred meters. But this is really the last uphill, for real. And then after this, it actually is all downhill. But it's thick out here. We're just crashing through alders, and there's not too many game trails that we've been able to follow. So we are the game, and we're making our own trails. Alright, so we've made it about 900 meters. How the boys feeling? Feel pretty good. Yeah, yeah pretty great really. Not looking forward to getting a boat. Nope, that's gonna suck. Yeah. 900 meters out of our 1200 meter portage of the first lake. And it was all uphill. We have arrived at our first lake. Holy smokes. Here is our little pond for potentially the night if we camp here. See how the boys are feeling after our second load. And lots of bugs. Classic. Today was a tough day. We're at, we've been at our camp for a little while now, and we've had some soup to warm up. And that first portage, she did not hold back. She came out in full force. It was only 1.2 kilometers, but all of it was uphill. I got super lost carrying the canoe, and went way off to the right, and I was calling for these guys, I couldn't even hear them. Soaking wet, mainly from sweat. And just, uh, yeah, it was a real grind. But we're here now. I've actually almost dried off my entire base layer, which is awesome. Got a dry, dry, warm place to sleep tonight. And we'll be well rested for tomorrow when we embark on the next part of this portage, which is said to be more difficult than today. So stay tuned for that. Don't take two bags though, because I'm taking two bags. And only one person has to take two bags. Morning guys, thanks for still following along. It is the morning of day 29, and we are on day two of our uh, portage across um, from Mistassin over to the Unnamed Creek. We have another tough day. We're gonna be portaging as the crow flies, another uh, like four kilometers. And then we descend like 700 feet in two kilometers, so that'll be more of like a, uh, a luge than a portage. Uh, all of us have some sort of injury that's keeping us not at 100%, but we'll limp our way through the portage and get it done today, so. It's the mindset, it's not raining, can't get much better than that out here, so. We're all looking forward to it. It's double chocolate bud day! Double chocolate bud day! Peanut butter, O. Henry, and a wonder bar.
holding on to these babies for weeks. Woo! That is a deadly combination. You should see my stash. I'm up to like four or five. You're gonna get raided one of these days. Yeah, you're gonna get raided, tied to a tree, and we're gonna eat them really I'm slowly. I'm eating all these today. Really slowly, right in front of you. Chris is actually a squirrel that we've trained to do canoe trips. This is my stash. I've been saving these for days now. <laughs> just for today. I got five. Five bars five one bars. day. Two of them wonder bars. So you're good to take both the canoes? Oh, I guess that's what's happening now. <laughs> I wake up hungry at 3 o'clock in the morning again. I'm going to go steal all those if you don't I, eat them. The location changes <laughs> daily. Don't worry. What are you using for a sponge there? This is typical for the region. Uh, for sponges, this is caribou moss. It works really well. It absorbs some water, has a little bit of roughage. Oh, no! Not only does it work as a great sponge, it also is an amazing toilet paper. But you gotta get enough because if you have too little, like your hands just go right through it. And uh, you can kind of guess what happens. Give you a free one. Yeah, that's, that's how we do it out here. Usually we do um, put a little soap in there, but not this morning. Oh, yeah, that's solid. <laughs> The great portage begins. Crazy. It's a sunny day. I can't believe it. I just need one more. And then you get all the chocolate milk. All the chocolate milk. It's never gonna happen. I bet Chris that we would get two consecutive sunny days. And he said there would not be over the course of our 35 days out here. <laughs> and, and the winner gets one gallon of chocolate milk in Nain at the end of the trip. At Nain prices. At Which Nain is prices. probably gonna be like 50 bucks. Yeah, yeah, for four liters of chocolate milk. So it is day 29 right now, and yeah. it, we still have not had two consecutive I've been crushing it so sun. far. This is probably only our fourth day of sun. Yeah, in that amount of time. Of all 29 of them. Yeah. We'll keep you guys updated on who ends up winning this. Just it's going to be more. me. One more. It's going to be me. So we just finished the first portage of the day, and it wasn't as bad as we expected. And on top of that, there's some blue sky. Uh, we're just approaching the second portage here. It's about two and a half kilometers. We're just gonna get, give her what we got. Keep going. Can't stop, won't stop. And hopefully tonight, we're gonna be sleeping on Cabot Lake and enjoying the last of our whiskey that we've been portaging and carrying for the last uh, month. So <laughs> That's something to look forward to. Oh yeah. Let's get to it. Let's do it. One canoe length at a time, two kilometers to go. What do you boys think of this? Better than carrying stuff. Yeah, it's different. It's different. Something new.
the creek that we were following ended up getting choked up eventually. So we've reverted to portaging because the ground was nice and open like this. Looks like she uh, chokes back up again with alders and lab tea and all the good stuff. The boys are just finishing up some lunch here before we continue the next section of the portage which will lead us down to that river that you can kind of see way in the distance down there. We have a long way down but the good news is, is we didn't know for sure how much water was going to be in that river and she looks to have a bit in there. We might be able to float our way down. farther we go the thicker and steeper it gets and uh, we've kind of started going too close to the river and now it's too late now it's just like a total total maze in here of just dead wood alders birch trees it's nuts look at the canoe So we just had the most difficult portage of our life and we've just made it to the end. It is currently quarter after six. We had lunch at the top of the slope. So that was like a six hour slog down a monster hill that was just full, choked full of trees. And then probably the biggest, thickest, oldest decaying forest we've ever seen. Um, you couldn't do more than one step without falling <laughs> like literally falling or getting tripped up and um, it was absolute hell by far the worst portage i've ever done and i think any of us has, have ever done in our lives so sure. so thick For sure. i was walking behind noah and i thought he got ahead and i was like "Ooh, there must be like a clear path and he was literally stuck under all of his bags wedged between two trees like you, you couldn't even take one step in front of you because everywhere was just like a wall of trees it was ridiculous we thought we'd never get out of there and yeah. we just did we just did we just did the unnamed creek we so we're gonna go we meet up it. <laughs> we made it we're gonna go meet up with the other guys who are down river from us a little bit and we're just gonna paddle down party on party on
That was the hardest portage I've ever done. Yeah, that was yeah. up there for me as well. The last two days. I was taking stock on what was in the packs that I was carrying, see if it would help make the night more comfortable, because I was almost positive I was never going to see any of my friends again. <laughs> or the sunlight, or the river, really anything. Yeah, but we did it. We're all here now. We're all here now. So like every big crossing, we like to celebrate. Uh, this isn't the height of land crossing, but this is one of the biggest ones, the most anticipated ones that we've had for this trip. It was about two days worth of work. Finally completed it on the other side. So that means tonight we are sharing Captain Black and having some of this whiskey that we've kept with us for about 30 days. It's not your best whiskey, but it's not too bad. It is a 40 Creek Copper Pot. Age 30 days though, man, in a bear barrel. True, yeah. Mmm. Hints of cherry. Is there cherry woods in there? Very, very good. You got some blood on your lip. Is that from a mosquito? I'd assume so. Or a black fly. Feeling rugged? Feeling pretty rugged. With the thousands of alders you dashed Yeah, when the sun comes out, the black flies come out in like full force. That's a thing because every day I feel like it's full force with those guys. <laughs> Is it pretty full force right now? Oh man, they just like, <laughs> whatever task you're trying to do, you just like are constantly getting pelted by black flies in the head. Just arms, like rain. anything. Yeah, they actually sound like rain. So yeah, you have to concentrate it while you get bit by like 25 flies at the same time. That's one of the things you learn out here is, is how to deal. Oh my gosh, man. How is this an unnamed creek? <laughs> oh no. Let's name this one. We are entering Mistassin Flows. We're on the Mistassin. Yeah. Yeah, there's the bear still. Or another one. You guys doing alright? Yeah. yeah. We took the creek to the confluence of the Mistassin River, which eventually flows into the Kogaluk River. The plan was to make it all the way to the Kogaluk tonight, but with temperatures and light dropping, we agreed to set up camp at the next gravel bar. We're now going with the flow of the river with no big obstacles over the next few days. We can all sleep easy tonight knowing it's all downhill to the Labrador Sea.
It is the morning of day 30. We've been here for 30 days. Still can't even believe it, time flies. But another great thing about today is that we have nothing but paddling to do. And we have decent weather right now. We woke up to blue skies, some clouds came in, but this is two days in a row. This is unheard about here. Last night we camped on this sand spit right beside this river. This entire section of the river, every corner there's this like a gravel bar or sand bar. So camping is pretty easy here and lots of dry wood as well. Whoa. <laughs> Does it not hurt? No! Like it's it's a little more sore today, but it really doesn't hurt. <laughs> Crazy, right? Oh, dude. So this is what happened to your ankle? Yeah, this is what happened. This happened when I rolled my ankle on the uh, upper or lower Mustastin River when we were portaging over all these waterfalls. And it happened about halfway through the day. And uh, luckily there were only two or three more portages left and the guys helped me out. And I definitely uh, probably overstressed a little bit and that's how I got this nice, uh, nice bruise on her. But she's feeling good today and we have 50K of pad lane or so to do. So give a little break and it'll be fine in no time. Boys, what's going on? We're paddling through mountains right now. It's ridiculous. Constant, we don't even really need to paddle. These are huge, these are copper mountains. What river are we coming up to now? We are on route to the Kogaluk. We've been waiting for this point for a long time. Almost at the Kogaluk. Woo! smokes. All right, so we just pulled over at a little uh, sand spit at the side of the river, and we're just entering into Cabot Lake, another massive lake that we have to paddle. Tons of mountains around it, and uh, the wind might be going in our direction, so we might even be able to raft up, and we're gonna try to build a sail so that we can get down the lake. Those should work for a sail, eh? I think so. They're nice and strong. Yeah. 
We're just having some quick lunch here before we launch our newly built pirate ship onto Cabot Lake. Remember when you thought you were a pirate? Now you actually get to be a pirate. Finally. Give the kids back home an R. <clears throat> Arr. So we've just been sailing our way down Cabot Lake for a couple hours now, it must be. And uh, we were starting to get hungry, but instead of pulling over, we decided, since we're on a sailboat now, we can actually uh, just get a boil going in the canoe. Chef, what do you have for us today? Uh, we're gonna do some um, poop your pants, strong coffee, and um, some leftovers and noodles and soup kind of thing, I believe. It's gonna be delicious. Sounds delicious. Yeah. Now everyone wants to know, what is that off the side of your beard right now? Oh, is there still food there? Yeah, there's still food there. Oh yeah. Little bonus hummus. Little leftovers. Little savor for later. Yeah. Yeah, you just leave that there. He executes the first pull almost perfectly. Oh. oh, he botched it, didn't he? Very well done. What could the judges say? 
Thank you, sir. Use launcher. You want to keep the boat straight. I'm trying. I got it. Oh, this is so stressful right now. Oh no. Bring it back. There you go. Here you go, sir. Enjoy your coffee today. Thank you very much. Cheers. For this experience here, sail down Cabin Lake. Oh, five grand. Yeah. This Moroccan dish really made it look interesting. You rethink of this one? Yeah, obviously. <laughs> obviously. <laughs> you gotta do it, man. You gonna dive in, or what's your strategy? Oh, it's most likely to have a heart attack, but. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go low splash, though, right, for the boys? Woo! <laughs> 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 How was that? Oh, oh she's nice. Oh, woo! <laughs> All right, so a bit of an update for you guys. The wind has changed directions on Cabot Lake. We made it like probably three quarters of the way down the lake, but then the wind died. And so we weren't really moving at all. And then immediately after, the wind switched directions and we're back to our classic headwinds again. So uh, we've broken off from our other vessel and we're just paddling down until we get to the end of the lake. Still some incredible views, but we are once again battling the headwinds. So we made it to the other side of Cabot Lake and we found ourselves a beach site for the night. Um, when we first arrived there was actually a black bear on the site, little guy. It was just running around checking out what's going on. We think he may have showed up a second time. We definitely saw a second bear on the other side of the beach but we think it could be the same one. Um, yeah, so we're just, we've got all the tents set up behind me over here. And uh, Noah's making us some chowder for dinner. So I'm gonna go see what's going on in the kitchen. All right guys, dinner's ready. Unreal. What's on the menu tonight? We're having a chowder with no fish. It's a bacon chowder. Bacon chowder. The boys are eating well tonight. Day 30. Did it rain out here for a bit this morning? It sprinkled. Of course it did. Yeah. Like I came out this morning, it looked like this, and I'm like, it's about to pour, so like I got this fire going, sat here and didn't. I swear, like as soon as you're like, coffee's ready, it was like, click, 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 click. I was like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, nice. Morning, Chris. Morning. Good morning. When I heard you yell, coffee's ready, and then like rain started pitter patter, I'm like, 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna move. Yeah, they're right back to our normal weather out here. Yeah. It's okay, we had two days. We actually like two perfect days. Like I'm not gonna complain. <laughs> It'll yeah. probably pour the rest of the trip, but like I'll still be happy. <laughs> Might as well make another round of coughs. Yeah. Might as well. No, and I, I go fresh beans as well. <laughs> oh man, you're going fre fully fresh grounds? Yeah. Man. Luxury okay. here on Cabot Lake. We can do anything we want. Yeah, you guys are high up the top. My toes. Should have taken better care of it yesterday. But... Yeah, you probably could have even taped it up in the boat. We've heard rumors about the Kogluk being great for fishing. And with no portages, Alex and I knew that today would be a big fishing day. FRP. Boys, we're going barbless out here, so the fishing's gonna be a little tougher, but it's better on the fish's mouths. I definitely could have brought you closer to that eddy, but I'm, I'm trying to film at the same time. I just got a trout on a top water fly. The Royal Wolf. Touched him. Count it. Count <laughs> it. Is he off? <laughs> He's off. Oh man, that was still so sick. I gave him a little swipe on his way out, so I think that counts. I think I'm gonna count it. Yeah. Nice fish. Thanks, man. I don't know if it was a PB, but it was definitely a nice fish. On the on the fly too. On the fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Alex is on a personal best brook trout on a homemade tide fly. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh yeah. On my homemade zonker. And I ain't taking anybody Come on, buddy. Yes. Oh my gosh. First fish on the mouse. Oh man, so fun. Oh buddy, oh my god, on the mouse. Looks like a decent sized one. First fish on the mouse. On the mouse. Oh yeah, buddy. Man. Good one? Holy, your rod is bent. This thing's big. Oh, 
Oh man! <laughs> oh man! Such a good fight. How's it feel? It was amazing. Such a good fight. Oh my god. This might also be my biggest brook trout ever. Don't say it, yeah man, you don't have it in the boat. I don't even have a strategy to get this back in the boat. Dude! Oh my god! I'm gonna roll Personal best. On, on the mouse! mouse. <laughs> on a mouse! Dude, that was incredible. That was such a fight. As soon as he set as soon as I set the hook on him, he just took off. I've never I've never had a fight like that on the fly. So we got a measure on her. How big was she? 20 inches. A 20 inch brook trout. Personal best. On a mouse. In the most ideal conditions I could possibly even dream of. So awesome. Doesn't get much better than that. It does not get much better than that. Maybe we should pull over and just take a breather. I cannot believe it. Oh my God. That was awesome, man. Brook trout mousing at its finest. Gonna head to the place where I know I belong. I belong. I'm gonna see my heart beating with the freedom of the love of the home that I know is where I'm from. Wow. Oh my God. You got one. <laughs> what the heck? That was insane. I saw that happen. That is a big fish that Alex is struggling with. Oh my God. They're everywhere right now. They're just friggin' smoking my mice. Holy smokes. Oh, I shouldn't have rushed that. No. I was just like trying to get him in. <laughs> you just lost like two personal best brook trout. Oh, oh my in God. In less than two minutes. What the hell, man? Buddy? Man, what the heck is happening right now? Oh my god, man. There better be another big one in there. Yo, yeah, they're all big. Alex is back on.
What's the strategy this time? Those are my least favorite head shakes when they just do spirals. It's a big fish. You got him. Oh my gosh. So awesome. On. Oh, man. dude nice fish monster so we made it to camp Dave and Chris got here a little before us because me and Alice got stuck in a honey hole for a couple hours we were just hammering those brook trout on on mice patterns which is absolutely the best way to, to catch a brook trout ever. I'm saying that, it's a fact. And we happen to do it and it's been an amazing day brook trout fishing. Absolutely, another gorgeous day. It's three days in a row. Did not even think that's possible. But now we're just having <clears throat> a little brook trout for dinner, as well as Chris is getting creative in the kitchen. He's been baking stuff. Don't really know what, it looks like there's blueberries in there though. Overall, an amazing day. Did not complain, this is one of the best days ever. Chris, you're getting creative in the kitchen tonight. What's going on here? Well, I went through my stock of what I had and realized I had a little bit of extra flour. So I decided to kick things up a notch because we had a nice day. We got a um, blueberry cake going over here. Oh my gosh. She's, uh, she's cooling off now, but be ready to eat soon for dessert. And we got uh, switched up the bannock a little bit and made little bread loaves for everyone. Cooking in the reflector room right now. Chef Chris, back at it again. Mice don't swim in the morning, do they? All right, so it is day 31 out here. It's 32, isn't it? 32. Today is day 32, and we've officially spent more than 1 12th of 2019 in Labrador. No and I tried to get on the water a little bit earlier than the other guys this morning. We're hoping that the mouse bite is still on out here. Um, that's yet to be determined. The guys are just shortly behind us and we're making our way to the ocean today. Uh, we got 17 kilometers or so left on the Kogaluk. We're gonna end up at a waterfall at some point and then uh, we portage that waterfall. Then it's some ocean paddling for the boys for the next couple days till we get to Nain. Thank you. 
All right, so we just came around a corner on the Kogaluk, and there is a set of rapids here for sure. We're wondering, there's a good chance that this could be the waterfall that flows out towards the ocean. It's 100% the waterfall. So since we've been traveling with eight paddles, they've been a huge burden on portages. So what we've been doing for the last three or four weeks was we wrapped them all together into this big lump of, of wood and then throw it over a pack like a bare barrel is the best because of the flat top. It gets rid of all the extra stuff that you have to keep in your hands. What about the fishing rods? Fishing rods we isolate so they're not with the with um, paddles just in case they get too banged up. So we wrap them up, put them back in their cases, the fly rods, oh, and man, put it, strap it on top of right a dry it. bag. Face first, right into it. Oh yeah. Do you want the green bag or the canoe? Because no man should have to do both. <laughs> I'll take the canoe. No, I'm that green bag sucks. It sucks so much. <laughs> it's the worst bag we have. It sucks is that green so bag. bad that I'd rather take the canoe. Yo, yeah, and normally I know I help you lift it up, but I think I need to film you. <laughs> Yeah. Noah versus the green bag, final round. Ping, ping, ping. I thought I'd bring it up, I gotta do one of these. <laughs> yeah. it pops it up. Throw it off the knee. Oh my god. In the middle section here, to keep your chest together, broke on like this, the first week. So as you walk, it opens up your chest and your arms go numb relatively fast compared to the other packs. But of course, you don't just take the green bag, eh? What if I should go paddles? They'll have more support than these bags. Yeah. It looks like behind your neck there, there is a nice little home that they could be nestled into. This will be a fun kilometer. <laughs> Make sure to have fun out there. It's the last portage. Dave, you got quite the haul going on here. Yeah, I'm trying to maximize. I'm trying to get this here uh, into the scrap here that I can't actually see. I think you got it. I think I got it. Nice. And then that frees up a hand to carry, uh, or maybe a pelican case today. Oh my gosh. See, it's really important to leave one hand at least free swipe the bugs. And to catch yourself when you fall. Oh well, yeah, I'm gonna fall. But when you fall, you learn to just throw everything in the air and just go with it. Just let yourself fall. Here we go. Good luck out there, man. See you on the other side. Dave's first cast on the other side of the Kogaluk, massive waterfall, are some massive fish. Noel might have a personal best brook trout on a homemade fly. Yeah, buddy. Wow. Hell yeah. What a beautiful fish. So we have decided that we are going to camp at this set of waterfalls tonight. No and I are just out fishing right now. I'm fishing, he's catching. And we're just having a, a chill night. We'll be starting on the ocean tomorrow and uh, we figured there was no need to rush that. So we are staying put for now and enjoying this beautiful campsite. What do you got? Nice brook trout on a lure that my buddy Steve made for me. That's beautiful. Gorgeous fish.
What are you eating on day 32? Day 32, here we are thinking last night, day 31, Chris has already outdone himself. I didn't think it could possibly get any better. Welcome to day 32, it just got a little bit better. Chris has made us a poutine using a loaf of bread that he made last night fresh, Vermont cheddar cheese down here, and a gravy that he threw some ground beef in because he's been hoarding ground beef. Chris, how do you keep outdoing yourself with these meals? Where, where's the inspiration come from? <laughs> Sitting in a canoe, just running through your head. I have these ingredients, I'm starving. What can I do? That's the, one of the benefits of just paddling. Yeah. The mind just goes places. Starving canoeists are the best people to make food for because they love everything. I often hoard food such as candy bars and granola bars. Today I was up to five bars and I kept keep a pretty steady steady amount of chocolate bars in my one of my pouches at all points. When we stopped at our cabin, I noticed there was some gravy uh, mix in one of the little barrels there, so I nabbed that, hoarded it for later, thinking it might come in handy, and it did. So there's your uh, camping lesson, always hoard your food. You get surprises on day 32. Day 24, and you busted out eight days later for the boys. Then it's a surprise. It's awesome, man. Got a horse. So good. Hmm. Poutine and waterfalls. Classic poutine incher. It's been the average size out here, but it's just some are more colorful than others. It's almost like every cast. So much fun. Good world. So much fun. All right, so today is day 33. And it's a big day for us because we are leaving the fresh water and starting our journey on the ocean, setting our sails and heading up the coast towards Nain. So we've moved all of our food that was left in the bear barrels over into our other dry bags. We are filling our bear barrels, maybe not all the way because they'd be super heavy, uh, with some fresh water. Are they liftable? Yeah. Nice. Weather seems pretty good today. If conditions are right and uh, we're able to get some distance under us, we're gonna try to get as far as we can today. And then uh, just kind of feel it out as the day goes. Hopefully find a nice island somewhere. Noah's gonna be carrying the shotgun out on the deck today because we are in polar bear territory now, so uh, just can't be too safe. We're hoping for a good day on the water. We'll let the folks know our special recipe with the spray deck today. Oh, we're trying a new flavor of spray deck. Uh, we put ours on backwards. Um, it's a little loose. We're gonna make it work. Hope for no big swells today or we're sinking. <laughs> Pray for no big swells. I'll take it. All right, I'm gonna help Noah get out of here. So we are just getting to the very end of the Kogaluk River where we're gonna be entering the ocean slash Boise Bay on the ocean. Now it's time for the, the big, big water paddling that we'll be doing on this trip. And I think we've got some prime weather for it right now. 
Do you see many sea creatures out here? Sea monsters? Yeah. Yeah. But what are we collecting at the at at the coast? Some oysters? If we can find mussels, that'd be pretty cool. Mussels would be insane. Make a little little wine marinade. Yeah, did you bring the wine? No, but if you ferment crowberries for long enough, we can make it out of that, can't we? Wine would be nice. Jeez, now that's a craving. I'd be really down for some charcuterie right now. Oh, craft beer has got to be like up there for me on like one thing I'm most cold craft beer. So we pulled over on a little bit of a rock point here just before we enter into the ocean. The Labrador Sea, and uh, we're just stretching our legs, having some chocolate bars to refuel. Say goodbye to the Kogaluk down there. You have been an incredible river. It's gonna be pretty sheltered once we get on the ocean. Yeah. Yeah. Comes to being any issues. Here we go. 4K crossing to get to Boise Bay. And we pretty much follow this this channel up. Yeah, this, the terrain should be pretty crazy out there. Still pretty mountainous. Hopefully calm. So here, I figure it's high tide probably within the last hour. It would be super helpful for us to get across this. Four or five kilometers here. Water is pro probably going that way out towards the ocean. And we are also going that way. We just ride the tide. So it should be pretty quick. Four kilometers, we paddle five, six kilometers an hour. Yeah. Plus the tide. We'll probably get across in half an hour, 45 minutes. Oh, yeah, buddy. I also have a surplus of bars. Dun, dun, dun. What are you packing? You got a cliff, a nature valley, and a Snickers. Big day. Oh man, I just busted out a Snickers myself. I'm gonna have it with my coffee. Yeah. Great. Oh yeah. Whoa. I was thinking about it, but that might mess me up for, for a few hours from now. I have four bars, now I have three bars, but I don't know, I still feel like I, I should be conservative, just in case later is more work than I expected, and I'm like, oh man, I want a Mars bar. Then I'm like, well, why did I down my, my cliff bar with a Mars bar when we were on that nice island back, a couple hours back? So I think my long-term strategy is I'm not gonna eat my Mars bar right now. I think that's a good idea. So you know it's a good day when you have multiple bars stashed away in your life jacket. So, I've had a minimum of one chocolate bar, at least, sometimes two, per day, for the last 33 days. Back home, I think I'd feel pretty gross about that, but out here, I'm like proud of it. I feel amazing. Definitely lost weight. No idea how much. There's a the diet for you. You get to eat at least a chocolate bar a day for 30 days straight, and you will still lose weight. All you gotta do is paddle from Menahik to Nain. So we are crossing to Voise Bay right now, and it is eerily calm and there are storms just north of us. So we're hoping that we can get across this before we have any sort of bad weather. But it is that calm before the storm, which is pretty, pretty freaky. Considering a couple guys just took their dry pants off. Yeah, we just took our dry pants off because it was so sunny, but now uh, we're second guessing that. So we just crossed that large bay 
and we got here just before the rain started. So we hunkered down underneath this pine, waited for the storm to pass, and it looks like the majority of it's gone. So we're gonna head back out on the water and continue down shore. Yeah. So you know what they say about Labrador, if you don't like the weather, just wait five minutes. And that's what we did, and now it's beautiful. But we're not gonna hold our breath, because it might get rainy again. As we've learned, you don't necessarily want to go from a nine to five like you would any other job back home. Uh, here it's totally weather dependent. If the weather is good early in the a.m., you travel early in the a.m., same goes at night. Oh, the tide's definitely going out. And it was definitely low tide at about... Or high tide. Sorry, it was definitely high tide at about 8 a.m. Yeah. So we figure it's going to be low tide at about 2 or 2.30. Part of the reason why we stopped, other than being hungry. Yeah. Is that if the tide's going out, the water's going that way, for sure. At about 2, it should be slack tide. And after about 2.30, it should be going this way. The Verde cheese is still going strong after 33 days. Mostly strong. A couple moldy pieces. North end of it? Oh. Grease forge on the south end of it? Okay. It's the closest piece of land in the North Pole. Mm You harvesting there. Some mussels for tonight. Plan something special for the boys? Yeah, steamed mussels, buddy. I hope I don't grab a sea anemone by accident. <laughs> Think you got enough mussels for four hungry hungry dudes? I don't know. How many does it take to get you sick? <laughs> <laughs> Just one. <laughs> We can portage up this and camp on that plateau up there. Yeah. And line down it in the morning. No problem. I can send the boat down that, no problem. Yeah. We can get down real quick. Good thing it in the morning. We are ending the day here on the Labrador Sea. We must have gone over about 30 kilometers, most of the distance so far. Uh, a couple large lake crossings. I guess it's not a lake, I guess large bay crossings. And uh, yeah, the weather's been pretty good. Some rain clouds in the distance, a little pitter patter every once in a while. But overall, amazing conditions for ocean paddling. I couldn't imagine paddling this ocean in any different like circumstances. Like this is so perfect. Yeah. Overcast, it's not too hot, there's a breeze. Sometimes it's warm, sometimes it's cold. You just don't know what you're gonna get. But overall, wind has been on our side.
Yeah, I think so. So all the mussels have opened up and they're looking pretty tasty. So they've been on for about five minutes. I'm just gonna take them off and let them cool off a bit. You don't have to cook them long, they're just little guys. But I'm gonna keep the steam in there. Mm, there's some sand in there, but that is a tasty friggin' muscle. I'm actually gonna put that back on for a bit. Any sauce for the mussels? Yeah. What do we got in here? Butter and Just some spices and onions. What's today? Day 34 or 33? 34. Holy smokes. So it is day 34 and we're on this nice, flat, mossy plateau. But the thing with this moss is that it's a little hard packed 
and I spent about five minutes trying to find the perfect moss to wipe my butt with, which is something that's been really easy over the last 33 days. But I just struggle. I had to walk really far down to find the perfect little patch. But uh, this is something new to us. Um, hard patches of moss, hard for wiping your butt. Day 34, what can you do? It could be the fact that it's toaster's toilet paper and it's lasted as long as it's far superior as most toilet papers. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. It was not a good choice. Just then, it was not superior toilet paper. I don't know if you can really make out the bug fly cloud. Can't see it? I don't think so. A lot of black flies around here right now. There's so many. They'd be going the exact same speed as us. So we are currently en route to Tabor Island, which is a historic Labradorite mine. It is no longer in use but we're hoping we can still find some Labrador right there and explore an old mine site. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of human activity out here, so that'll be our first sort of, kind of like taste of uh, the use of the, of the natural resources out here, which is a big thing actually. Labrador is known for its mining. Yeah, there's a lot of minerals and uh, different things that people have been taking out of the, out of the rock here, out of the ore. And it's, uh, it compromises the, the raw wilderness out here. But we haven't seen much activity, so that's pretty cool to see. Well, this will be our first, Tabor Island. So the conditions got really bad really quickly. The wind picked up, started raining, and we got really cold. It's about seven or eight degrees right now. We decided not to go to the island just because of how brutal it is out. Uh, we went to shore, got a fire going. We're in, the, we're in a sheltered area over there. We're probably gonna get some soup in us and try to warm up a bit and, let, and hopefully let this storm pass. Our next move is gonna be a two kilometer crossing, which right now would be right into headwinds. So we really don't wanna do that if we don't have to. So we're just gonna see how this weather is and move accordingly. My feet were actually numb. Frozen solid. So the boys are back on the water again. After having a little bit of lunch and laying low while the winds were howling. We got some beautiful landscape here that we're paddling in the meantime and uh, we're enjoying every last minute of it. So we're just pulling up to what we think might be our last campsite. We're about three kilometers out from Nain. Is this home tonight, boys? I'm gonna go with yes. <laughs> <laughs> 
Home yep. sweet home. home. So we are currently on our last night out here and there's a high mountain behind our campsite and I was like I want to go climb that so I came up here with Chris and the view does not disappoint survive this, you can survive pretty much anything your work throws at you. Well, if you can like plan it all, yeah, all really the time point. that goes in ahead of time, and then go out and execute it and like do the whole thing. Why don't we just throw a bucket of water in that nice pair of underwear that you're wearing right there, <laughs> fill it with sand, and then I'm going to whack you with alder bushes and fill you in a room full of bugs and you have to do that for 35 days. Put that in your analogy and smoke it. <laughs> exactly. Oh man, it's been a wild ride. Chris, what is this? So, this is... A day 35 treat. A day 35 treat, right. When we have excess food, it's you make fun things, yeah. You, you start uh, start wondering what you can do. And so, what I've got here is some peanut butter sourdough, and there's a Snickers bar and some jam inside. We're gonna see if this works. It may not work, but like everything else on this trip, we're just gonna send it. Let's see what happens. I think this puppy's about ready to come out. Oh my god. <laughs> Snickers bar in there, it's jam. This was a, uh, this was a hard trip. But at the same time, very rewarding. It is bittersweet, 100% bittersweet. You're out here for so long, you get into a rhythm, I'm lost for words. It's it's hard to think it's coming to an end. Like this seems like this is life. All these trips, all these endings are bittersweet. You, you have a life to get back to, but at the same time, this has been your life for 35 days and you really don't want to leave it. It's simpler out here and it's certainly healing for me and I think everyone else on the team. Everyone got something that they wanted out of it, Got found what they were looking for. Just going back to like all the planning that went into this trip, speculations on what it might be like, how difficult it was going to be, how bad the bugs were going to be. These all became really real things over the course of the 35 days and we had some really, 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 really difficult days that pushed us in ways that like I don't think any of us could have pictured coming into this. I think every day there was a challenge that we've never faced before on this trip. It was constant mental and physical stimulation constantly having to be present all the time because if you didn't you could slip twist your ankle break a leg swing the boat a lot of different things that could go wrong the scenery got more and more spectacular as we went and i think we earned it through all the hard work that we went through i highly recommend several of these portages are just not to be missed <laughs> you, you you must do it i'd still do it all over again if i had 35 days of food in maine i'd go for another 35 you get to do this and like work hard every day. But you see areas that 
blow your mind. Like totally blow your mind. Like we are in the mountains in Northern Labrador on the Labrador Sea, eating like kings, living like kings, cast a line, fishing like kings. It, it's, it's a life of total freedom out here. It really is. And I'm enormously proud of our team. We have a very, very good team for this. We kept really good attitudes. We're very open and honest with each other the whole time. The perfect team to, to complete this expedition. We all worked really well together. You know, coming to the end, smiles on our faces. We made it through all the difficult times. I've said multiple times throughout the trip that I'm not sure that I know a whole lot of other people who'd be able to keep up and be able to deal with the rain, the bugs, the hard work, and it could have been a very different trip without that. I think it's all gonna set us all up to uh, go back to society with a uh, good, strong mind to take on any of the crazy challenges that are about to come our way. We've set ourselves up very, very well for the future. Anytime life gets hard back home, I'll just look back on a couple of these portages and uh, things won't seem so bad anymore. 10 out of 10 trip, would do it again, 100%. This is a true experience. I will take it with me for the rest of my life, 100%. Trip of a lifetime. Trip of a lifetime. Yeah. 